Are you ready for the weekend? Weekend on UME Radio. Get the UME Radio app. Weekend on UME Radio. The sun is up and so are we. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook, all at UME Radio. UME Radio. Positive entertainment 24-7. Subscribe on YouTube and click the notification bell. Welcome to Entertainment Now on UME Radio, WUMEDB New York. This show takes you beyond the music, dance, box office and thrills. For deeper and more meaningful insights into the minds and hearts of the players. We share stories about pop culture, celebrities, and everything entertainment. But with education and empowerment in mind. It's all about positive entertainment. Get fit. Mind, body and soul with pro athlete, impact speaker, and performance coach, DeAndre Borrell. Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. She decided to jump, and it was the best decision she ever made. You are now tuned in to Business and Branding with Show. She is a lifestyle engineer and a digital wealth creator, passionate about financial empowerment. You're tuned in to Wealth Mindset with Marsha Gay Miles. It's Weekends with Jesse, a resource for the community. Black health is black wealth. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Be the light. You're watching. Apostle Faith Live, with children, reading Bible stories. To be on the show, go to wamo.org forward slash media, to apply. Tune in every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. For every child, everywhere. Do not miss out on the fun. Keep watching. Let's talk. Relationship. On You, you Me Radio. Radio. So what are we talking about? Marriage, dating, parenting, business, and love, emotions, sex. It's a conversation with me, Lady Misty, and DJ KTE on everything from hot topics to taboos. Join us Mondays at 9 p.m. live on UME Radio. Follow us at Let's Talk Relationship Show on Facebook or on UME Radio on Instagram. Let's Talk Relationships. Arguments for the grown. Get the UME Radio app to listen wherever you are. That is UME Radio one word underneath it all who are we sexually bible cufflinks and stilettos with giselle st james monday nights at 10 p.m for mature audiences only Entertainment Now on UME Radio, WUMEDB New York. This show takes you beyond the music, dance, box office and thrills. For deeper and more meaningful insights into the minds and hearts of the players. We share stories about pop culture, celebrities, and everything entertainment. But with education and empowerment in mind. It's all about positive entertainment. Here is today's hot topic. Today's Hot Topics The Will Smith interview on Good Morning America, Portia Williams's Family Matters, and her huge gesture to her mom and SAG nomination for King Richard. Let's begin. In his new memoir, Will, the actor 53, delves into the most personal details of his life, from his relationship with Jada Pinkett Smith, to his at times traumatic childhood in Philadelphia. Smith said that his father, who died in 2016, was abusive toward his mother, 
and that dynamic affected him for years. Smith tried to bury those painful memories, and he never discussed them with his mother until he decided to write his book. This book doesn't waste any time. Uh, right. <laughs> I mean, you don't waste any time. Yeah, page, page one, okay, chapter here we go. one, line chapter one. one. <laughs> Let me just read this bit. What you have come to understand as Will Smith, the alien annihilating MC, the bigger than life movie star, is largely a construction, a carefully crafted and honed character designed to protect myself, to hide myself from the world, to hide the coward. Uh, my father was abusive with my mother, and uh, I was probably nine, and I watched my father beat up my mother, and I was too scared to do anything. And just on my young mind, they became imprinted, you know, it's like, what kind of kid stands there and lets somebody hit their mother and they don't do anything? For the actor, the truth matters. It's why he's tried to be open about the hurt he's experienced in his life, and it's at the root of how he intends to conduct himself in the future. This story is courtesy of GoodMorningAmerica.com. That's how you help out your own, Portia Williams reveals she left her home to her mom. Portia Williams revealed on January 5th that she is officially moving out of her Duluth mansion. The reality star first purchased the residence in 2016 for $1.15 million. According to Realtor.com, the 5,920-square-foot property has five bedrooms, five-and-a-half bathrooms, five fireplaces, top-of-the-line appliances, and is even a part of a golf community. This story was written by Diamond Jun and is courtesy of AtlantaBlackStar.com. According to the article published on January 12, Portia Williams disclosed that she gifted her mother her former house as she moves into a new home with her fiancé Simon Gobadia. In an Instagram post that included an image of her former residence, Williams also disclosed in the caption that she is giving the mansion to her mother Diane Williams in addition to moving out. She wrote, New Start. Moving day congratulations, mommy, at MS Diane Official, now you can move all the furniture and decorate just how you want lol. The Porsche Family Matters star added how much of a blessing it was to give her mom her former home. If you all know fabulous mama Diane, then you know she is about to show out. It's such a blessing to be able to do something like this, God is so good. One fan wrote in response to the post. This is beautiful Portia. I just love you and your mother's relationship. What a blessing. CNN Entertainment reports that Will Smith has been nominated for outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role for King Richard. In an article on edition.cnn.com, the actor is quoted saying, I am humbled and honored that the Williams family trusted me with their story and that my fellow actors have given our film such a warm reception. Getting to walk in Richard's shoes and having the opportunity not only to show the world how misunderstood he was, but also to illuminate the true plight of this family as they paved their own road to becoming two of the most iconic names in sports history. And to get to do it with this absolutely beautiful cast of actors, Anjanut John, Tony and the powerhouse performances by two of the best young actors I've ever seen on film, Sania and Demi. I'm beyond grateful for this experience, for this ensemble cast being recognized, and I'm mostly proud to play a small part in shining further light and love on the Williams family. According to BlackPast.org, Josephine Baker is remembered by most people as the flamboyant African-American entertainer who earned fame and fortune in Paris in the 1920s. Yet through much of her later life, Baker became a vocal opponent of segregation and discrimination often initiating one-woman protests against racial injustice. In 1963, at the age of 57, Baker flew in from France, her adopted homeland, to appear before the largest audience in her career, the 250,000 gathered at the March on Washington. Wearing her uniform of the French resistance of which she was active, in World War II, she and Daisy Bates were the only women to address the audience. Baker spoke just before Dr. Martin Luther King gave his, I have a dream oration. Josephine Baker, the life story you may not know. Thanks to Stacker.com. To celebrate her political, professional, and personal accomplishments, 
Stacker curated a list of 25 facts from her life that some fans may not know. Sources researched include Britannica, ThoughtCo, documentaries, newspaper articles, Baker's Estate, and other online resources. Josephine Baker's rise from a child street performer on the impoverished streets of St. Louis to one of the most successful black artists of her time is a thrilling life tale. She lived a life that defied odds, building her career during the Harlem Renaissance before taking off to Paris. It was there that she began to thrive as a civil rights activist, performer, and even a French World War II spy, without the constraints of the systemic racism she grew up with. In August of 2021, it was announced that Baker would be inducted into France's pantheon, with soils from France, Monaco, and the US, all significant locations throughout the star's life, being brought to rest with some of France's most honored and prominent people November 30th. She is the first black woman to receive the honor. At the request of Baker's family, the performer's remains will stay in Monaco. France is honoring the US-born 20th century singer and activist, Josephine Baker, with a place in the Pantheon on Tuesday. She's the first black woman to be remembered in the resting place of France's national heroes, through her work on civil rights and for the resistance during the Second World War, the BBC reported on November 30, 2021. 1906, a star is born in St. Louis. Josephine Baker was born on June 3, 1906, in St. Louis, as Frida Josephine McDonald, to Carrie McDonald, an adoptee of a formerly enslaved couple. Her father's identity is widely disputed by some, but her estate lists drummer Eddie Carson as her father. Baker's mother later remarried and had three more children. 1918, she danced in the streets. Baker spent her early years developing street savvy in St. Louis's low-income, Mill Valley neighborhood. She had dropped out of school at 12 and danced in the streets for survival cash. At age 13, she took on a waitressing job at the Old Chauffeur's Club and did domestic work for white families. 1910s and 1920s, teenage marriages and stage name. Her first of several marriages during her lifetime came at 13 when she married a man named Willie Wells. The marriage dissolved within a year and she was married again at 15 to William Howard Baker. She was a traveling vaudeville performer and eventually divorced him, however, she kept his surname for professional use. 1919, Dixie Steppers and Chorus Girl Routine. According to the documentary, Josephine Baker, the first black superstar, Baker began performing with a black vaudeville group called the Dixie Steppers. This led to her joining the touring company of the musical, Shuffle Along, and lightening her skin to fit a racist beauty standard. Baker was the comedic relief in dance numbers, as the chorus girl on the end of the line, who couldn't quite figure out the dance steps. But by the show's encore, she figured out those steps, and did them better than the rest of the troupe. 1923, Baker, in the Harlem Renaissance. Baker landed in New York, at the beginning of the famous Harlem Renaissance. She appeared in the Broadway version of Shuffle Along and eventually in the Chocolate Dandies. After more than a year of appearing in these shows, her distinctive dance style and talent brought Baker her own billing, often being referred to as the highest paid chorus girl in the world. 1925, Baker moves to Paris. At 19, and believing that she had accomplished all that she could in the United States, as a dancer, Baker made her way to Paris to dance for the Théâtre de Champ Elysees in La Revue Niger. The show featured all black performers. Baker performed the Don Savage a pas de deux with partner Joe Alex and became a popular entertainer in France. Her uninhibited dancing style and fervor were unlike anything white audiences had ever seen. 1920s, Baker's Unorthodox Pets Baker had an affinity for both domesticated and exotic pets. She had dogs, cats and fish, but her pet Cheetah, named Chiquita, and her pig, named Albert, caught a lot of attention. Chiquita would often perform with Baker on stage. 1926, Birth of the Banana Skirt in Paris, her uniqueness won her a starring spot at the Music Hall 
Foley's Bergera, where she crafted her iconic performance of dancing in a banana-adorned G-string. The now iconic look has been duplicated by artists, like Beyoncé, in tribute to Baker. Her nearly nude performances caused a stir among audiences, with some loving it and others condemning her shows. 1927, Groundbreaking Black Woman Stars in Movie Baker was one of the first black stars to appear as a lead in a film. Siren of the Tropics, a silent French film, features her as a West Indies native and dancer who follows a businessman back to France. 1928, The Josephine Baker Duel Baker's allure was undeniable with her rise to French fame. But there was actually a duel fought over her in Budapest, Hungary. In 1928, Captain Andrews Lavoidi, of the Hungarian military, got into a fight with her manager and lover Giuseppe Pepito Abatino for eyeballing Baker. The latter, who called himself a count, challenged Zlovoidi to a duel with swords. They fought for about 10 minutes while Baker looked on, before she made them stop. Abatino was injured but the pair eventually settled their differences. 1929, Baker's historic and controversial Yugoslavia visit. Continuing her tour and her relationship with Abatino through Central Europe, Baker visited Belgrade, Yugoslavia. At the time, Baker was the first black star to visit and perform in the country. She honored the country's traditions in her performances and donated a part of her earnings to Serbian children. Baker and Abatino never married. 1937, Baker obtains French citizenship. Baker, one of the first prominent African-American performers to move to France, endured racism in her native United States that did not exist in France. After a return to the United States to perform again, a disappointing starring role in the 1936 remake of Ziegfeld Follies pushed her to become a French citizen. She married Jean Lyon, a French industrialist, but the couple divorced in 1940. 1939, a World War II military spy and shelter. Baker's popularity and access to high-ranking officials through her work led to an unexpected mission. In 1939, a French military agency tapped Baker to gather intelligence during her soirees and report back to give France an advantage. When Nazi German troops invaded France, Baker housed people who were helping the free French government forces at her home, the Château de Milans. This resistance took her all around Europe and later to French colonies in North Africa. General Charles de Gaulle made her a Chevalier of the Legion of Honor, and she received the Croix de Guerre Award for her contributions. 1947, Purchase of Château de Milans. In 1947, Baker purchased her rental residence, the Château de Milans, a sprawling castle, to showcase her status and wealth. It has been reported to include the Château, a bakery, a jazz club, and motel. It remained her homestead, for herself and her children, until the late 1960s, when she lost it due to mounting debts. The castle became a museum, with a few of Baker's belongings, including a banana skirt, on display. 1940s to 1970s, final marriage and rumored relationships. Her fourth marriage to composer and conductor, Joe Bullion, lasted from 1947 until 1961. However, Baker was known for several rumored extramarital relationships with both men and women. Her rumored relationships included singer Clara Smith, actress Mildred Smallwood, and artist Frida Kahlo, among others. Her platonic partnership with Robert Brady came in the 1970s, during the final years of her life. 1951, Newfound, American Fame Baker spent the rest of her life as a French citizen, but that didn't mean she forgot about her American roots. She returned to the United States, specifically Miami, for an engagement at the Copa City nightclub. She fought to appear for an integrated audience and won. Baker's success had her traveling America for a short while in a string of successful shows. She famously continued to refuse to do any show in a city that called for segregated audiences. 1951, Josephine Baker Day. 
Her work with the NAACP, and as a civil rights activist, led to the organization designating May 20 as Josephine Baker Day in 1951. Baker also took the title of the NAACP's Woman of the Year in 1963, following her speech at the March on Washington. 1951, Communist Accusations and Return to France Baker's return to America, after years in France, was cut short after she got into a verbal and written scuffle with journalist Walter Winchell for not supporting her denouncement of the NYC-based Stork Club's racist discrimination against her and other black people. Winchell accused her of being a communist, which led to the termination of her work visa for nearly 10 years. 1953, Baker adopts the first of many children. It started in 1953. Baker adopted 12 children, from Algeria, Colombia, Finland, France, Israel, the Ivory Coast, Korea, Morocco, Japan, and Venezuela. It was her effort to prove that people from different walks of life could live and grow together in harmony. The Rainbow Tribe consisted of two daughters and ten sons. The children would often travel with her and appear on tours of her expansive home, for which she charged admission. Baker herself became Roman Catholic, but her children were raised under several religions. 1963, Civil Rights Era, Activism Baker was involved in the civil rights movement, publicly speaking up about racist and exclusionary laws in America. She spoke at the 1963 March on Washington, the only woman officially slated for a speech. And now, to show the international character of the struggle in which we are currently engaged, I would like to introduce to you a person who, though far in residence from our shores, has come all the way from her home to be with us today Miss Josephine Baker. I want you to know that this is the happiest day of my entire life. And as you all must know, I have had a very long life, and I'm 60 years old. The results today of seeing you all together is a sight for sore eyes. You're together as salt and pepper, just as you should be just as I've always wanted you to be, and peoples of the world have always wanted you to be. <laughs> you are a united people, at last, because without unity, there cannot be any victory. <laughs> Ye, I'm glad, I'm glad that in my homeland, in my homeland where I was born and love and respect, I'm glad to see this day come to pass. This day because you are on the eve of complete victory. <laughs> and tomorrow, time will do the rest. I want you to know also how proud I am to be here today and after so many long years of struggle, fighting here and elsewhere for your rights, our rights, the rights of humanity, the rights of man. <laughs> I'm glad that you have accepted me to come. <laughs> I didn't ask you, I didn't have to. I just came because it was my duty. And I'm going to say again, you are on the eve of complete victory. <laughs> you continue on 
You can't go wrong. The world is behind you. Her words drew comparisons between France, where she could live freely, as a black woman, and America, where she was refused service, for her race. Following Martin Luther King's death, in 1968, Baker declined an offer, from his widow, Coretta Scott King, to lead the movement, due to the demands of her children. 1966, Performance, for Fidel Castro Controversial political figure, Fidel Castro, invited Baker to perform in Havana, to celebrate the seventh anniversary, of his revolution. Her show, at the Teatro Musical de la Habana broke records, a full circle moment, after Havana Post editor, Clara Pacino, tried to have the performer barred, from visiting the country. 1968, Royal Connections Pay Off, for Baker. It's no secret, that Baker knew countless high-profile people, on a first-name basis. This includes actress Grace Kelly, who later became Princess of Monaco. The pair first met in 1951, and remained good friends for decades. Kelly supported Baker once, after she was refused service at an establishment, and in 1968, gave her financial help, and a residence near Monaco, when she could no longer maintain, the Chateau de Milans. 1968, Later Career Moves Baker, had retired from the stage, after adopting her 12 children, but returned, to performing at the Olympia, in Paris in 1968, following her financial troubles. Subsequent performances included, Carnegie Hall in New York, in 1973, and the London Palladium, in 1974. By this point, Baker had been performing for decades, and still drew large crowds. 1975, Baker's declining health, and last performance. The costs of performing and age, changed the way Baker could perform. Nevertheless, she celebrated her 50 years in the business, in the musical, Josephine Abobino 1975, on April 8, 1975. Her performance led to excellent reviews and brought out high-profile people, like Princess Grace, Mick Jagger, Diana Ross, and Liza Minnelli. Josephine Baker was the girl who left St. Louis to come to Europe to find freedom. Baker had fled segregation in Missouri and was enchanted with the freedom and acceptance she found in France. But there was racism here too, both in her roles on stage and in her daily life. Madam Josephine. Speaking to the BBC years later, she explained how she fought against it, adopting 12 children from around the world that she nicknamed her Rainbow Tribe. These children represent an example of real brotherhood. They show to people that it is possible to live together if we so wish to. 1975, death and full French military honors. On April 12, 1975, Baker was found lying on her bed in a cerebral hemorrhage-induced coma. She was surrounded by newspapers of her performance's excellent reviews. Baker later died at the Pitti Salpetriere Hospital at 68. She had a Roman Catholic funeral and full military honors, a first for an American-born woman. Baker is buried at the Cimetière de Monaco in Monaco. And now for today's Spotlight. Yumi Radio was originally founded in 2009. Back then, it was called Advanced Media Production. After winning first place in the Jamaica Broilers Fair Play Awards, the company seized operations around 2012. In December 2018 the company was rebranded and brought back into operations with new ownership, and in February 2019, it launched its first radio station, Yumi Radio, under the call sign, WUME, DB, New York. Yumi Radio is a digital radio station, owned and operated, by UME Digital Media Inc., a digital studio and multimedia company, headquartered in Bronx, New York. Our brands are committed to inspiring, educating, and entertaining people, through transformative and empowering content. Our mission is to reach 1 million households, touch 1 million lives, and showcase 1 million brands. Get the Yumi Radio app for the full experience, available via your Apple and Google Play stores. If you want to listen on the web, you may go to app.umeradio.com or via our website at www.umeradio.com. Our content can be watched on Caribbean. You can also listen in via Amazon Music, 
iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Google Podcast, Podbean, TuneU, Live 365, Spotify Stitcher Player FM Listen Notes. For all business inquiries, contact us at info at yumiradio.com. This station is 100% community funded. To support us, please visit yumiradio.com forward slash get involved. Subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere online at UME Radio. Thank you for supporting us. Yumi Radio, positive entertainment 24-7. Get fit. Mind, body, and soul. With pro athlete, impact speaker, and performance coach, DeAndre Borrell. Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. Good morning. How is everybody doing today? This is DeAndre Burrell with Get Fit, Mind, Body, and Soul. I hope everyone's having a blessed day. I hope everyone is having a loving morning right now so far all across the world. Uh, I'm just very thankful for this morning and the weekend show. So uh, today, uh, again, welcome to Get Fit, Mind, Body, and Soul. Um, Got some things today that I want to speak about. Of course, you know, I always start off with the prayer. I always start off with the Bible verse and the prayer. So um, Bible verse for the day is Isaiah 40, 29 through 31. New International Version. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So I just want to say thank you, Father God, for this morning. Thank you for waking us up this morning and putting us in our right minds. Thank you for the You and Me Radio and the Weekend Show and everyone behind the scenes. Um, It's just a blessing to be here, a blessing to have this show. It's a blessing that people chose me to do this show. It's a blessing that people chose the weekend show, the people in the weekend show, uh, the great leadership that everyone has and provides and the skills and the, and the, uh, man, just their gifts that they're giving on this show is just such a blessing. So I just ask that everyone's segment today, everyone that's watching has a blessed day, whether you're going to work, whether you're driving, whether you're relaxing, uh, whether you're spending time with your family. I just hope everyone has a great and blessed day and that we live in abundance and that we continue to walk in faith and continue to seek the Lord and to continue to trust him in all that we do. It's in your name, Jesus, we pray and thank you. Amen. So today, I want to talk about after starting your performance health journey, your fitness journey. Um, And before that, we have a disclaimer that I have to read. So the disclaimer, you and me radio and creatively LLFC strongly recommend that you consult with your physician before beginning any exercise program. You should be in good physical condition before participating in any exercise program. I am not a licensed medical provider and I have no expertise in diagnosing, examining or treating medical conditions of any kind or in determining the effect of any specific exercise on a medical condition. If you engage in any exercise based on information on this show, you agree to that you do so at your own risk. The information provided is not intended to be a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you have read, seen, or heard on this show. So that is the disclaimer. 
And uh, today we'll be talking about after you start your health journey. Um, wanted to talk about some goal setting. Okay, uh, SMART goals is an acronym. Okay, SMART goals. We have SMART goals. Uh, those of you that may be on the show, those of you on UMB Radio, people watching, you know what SMART goals are. If not, they're specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-based goals. Uh, this is a, an article that I was reading according to uh, the writer, the publisher, Kat Bugard. Um, it's a whole summary on SMART goals. Okay. Um, specific. You want to be specific with your goals. What is your intention? Uh, what is it that you're wanting to accomplish? Right. Measurable. Making sure that uh, it's 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 there. Measure it. See how big it is. See how small it is. Where can you take it? Attainable. You want to be able to reach that goal. Uh, attainable goals are very important because what you're writing down and what you're putting down, you want to be able to accomplish it or get to that point, right? Sometimes we set goals and we miss the mark, but that's why it's a goal. So challenge yourself in your goals as well. And you want to make it relevant to what you're doing. Uh, you don't want to make things up and <clears throat> create a goal that has no relevance of where you want to go or what you're wanting to do with your fitness journey. Um, it could be your body goals. It can be your mind goals. It could be your spiritual goals. That's all a part of your fitness and uh, what you desire. And the last thing is time-based, right? You want to make it time-based. Uh, put a time limit on it. Okay, make put a time limit on it. If it's something that's attainable in a short amount of time, if you know you can get five workouts in a week, then you put a time on it. Put a time on it. Um, and then my next uh, point is time based. So examples of goal setting could be I want to gain two pounds of lean muscle in my upper body by February 5th, 2022. Okay, I want to pray at least 30 times by February 14th, 2022, or February 1st, 2022. Um, I want to be able to speak at least 100 self affirmations into my life by February 17th, 2022. Those are some goals that you can create and write. They're simple. Um, you know, say you've started your health journey already and you don't know what to do. This would be perfect to set smart goals, okay? Things that you can accomplish, whether it's 21-day goals, 90-day uh, goals. So 21 days creates a habit. 90 days creates a lifestyle. So 90 days would be three months. 21 days is almost a month. So um, just setting those goals, let's see. Oh, yeah. Satin Brownie says, I love this for sure. For sure. Um, you know, this is something that I want to do for myself more and actually writing it and seeing it. I'm actually clearing my room. Uh, you don't see it. You may see some things in the background. This is like my vision board, but you can't see it right now. I'm going to fill it up and uh, just write down my goals, all my smart goals, things that are attainable. Uh, between now and was it January, February, March, between March and put all those things together and just make yearly goals as well. Uh, those are also things you can do. So uh, just making sure that you put a, a time on it and just remember if you don't hit that mark at that time, you can always recommit to time. Remember that you can always recommit to time. Um, say you don't hit your goal on February 1st. Well, I re recommit to this goal by February 10th. You accomplish the goal. Um, that's another thing. A lot of times in our life, uh, whether it's fitness, uh, our life, our mind, uh, our spirit, we feel like we let ourselves down, but you can always recommit to those goals. So if you don't lose those five pounds within 21 days, Recommit for the next uh, 20 days, 
and see what you can accomplish. So um, now I'm going to be talking about self-affirmations. And that's what comes with your goal setting. Okay, self-affirmations, the recognition and assertion, that's the definition, of the existence and value of one's individual self. The recognition and assertion of the existence and value of one's individual self. So just remember when you are wanting to write these goals down, write down self-affirmations as well. You can also write it down in your mirror. You can write it down on paper. Right now I have some on paper behind me. I have, I am a champion, I am gold. I am a winner. I am a multimillionaire. Those are some things that I do have on my paper, on my white paper. What if I'm too busy to get smart goals? And what is it? What if there is too much chaos and crowd in my home? Okay, that's what Satin Brownie says. What if I'm too busy to get to set smart goals? And what is there too much? What if there's too much chaos? and crowd in my home. Okay, well, one, I'll say to Satin, you're never too busy to create SMART goals. If you're able to set aside time to brush your teeth, if you're able to set aside time to be on the phone, if you're able to set aside time to uh, go get something to eat, to cook, Reevaluate and see what's valuable to you. Uh, cut something out of what you were doing on a daily so you have the opportunity and time to create those SMART goals and write them down. Um, even when you're at work, you can think about it. You can always type it on your phone. Um, there isn't an excuse on what you can do because all of it is possible, right? And we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us as well. So just remember, uh, take a look at what you're giving time to and what you're not giving time to, because you can always make time for those goals. If it's important to you, you're gonna make time for it. Um, and if you're too busy at home, I believe that you can, or it's too crowded at home, I believe that you can, find some time for self-care and be able to step outside and do what you need to do, whether it's a workout um, or write down your goals on your own. Let's see, good advice and take baby steps. You don't have to rush through it. Get a diary, use this time you have for sure. Definitely, um, I actually have a journal. I have a lot of journals. So um, again, if you, when you start your health journey, if it was you just to get started, to get going, and now you're ready to take it to another level, now you can uh, start writing down goals. But uh, the self-affirmations, uh, let me get back to that. Uh, speak it, believe it, and live it. Okay, speak it, believe it, and live it. This is for your fitness. This is for your mind. This is for your spirit. This all goes together because if you don't have all three uh, you'll be lacking in certain areas and you'll be wondering why maybe you can't accomplish a goal. Sometimes it just starts in your mind, right? Some of us have the mind, but then our physical won't go, right? Some of us have the, the, uh, the physical, but our mind won't go. So it's just important to create that balance. Um, I speak life into my life. Here's some self-affirmations you can speak. I speak life into my life. I speak health into my life. I love myself for who I am. I focus on action to create the life that I want. I maximize my performance through my discipline. I can do it, I can do it. So if you're at home right now, go ahead and speak those affirmations into your life right now and see what it does for you in this moment. If you need to close your eyes or memorize them, Write them down, speak it, meditate on it, live it, dream it, um, just do it. 
That's what it comes down to. Just do it, whatever you need to do in this moment. If you have time in this moment, go ahead and speak those affirmations to yourself. I speak life into my life. I speak health into my life. I love myself for who I am. I focus on action to create the life that I want. I maximize my performance through my discipline. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Um, those are just some things that you can say to yourself and speak to yourself. Speak life into yourself. It's just possible. So don't worry about uh, what people may say, what people see. Just remember, this is your fitness journey. It's about you in this moment. Uh, it's about how you feel, what you're creating, what can you create, right? You got to speak those things. I have the body that I desire right now. The body of my dreams, I'm living in it right now. Those are all things you can speak to yourself. Um, putting up pictures, writing the affirmations over the pictures. So I'm big on that. And I truly believe that it'll help you and take you to another level. So as well as the goal setting, the SMART goals, write down those self affirmations and truly believe it, really believe it and put in the work, right? Because we can't just write something down and not put in the work. Right. Faith without works is dead. So faith without works is dead means there's action. There needs to be action in everything that you do. Action, 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 action. You must be action, be in action at all times and not worry about what others may say. Um, and also the goals, you don't have to accomplish them by yourselves. So you can always, you know, have an accountability partner. Have an accountability partner. Send your friends those goals or send your trainer those goals um, and, and, and have them hold you accountable for what you're saying you want to do. Be in integrity. Be in integrity. Stick to your word because your word is all you have. If you don't believe what you say and believe what you write down and you're just not living in it, then you're just lying to yourself. Nobody but yourself. So the blame, you can't put the blame on anyone else. So sometimes we want the results and we don't put in the work. So it just comes down to work. And I'm speaking to myself, too, because I've done it and I'm not the only one. I know friends have done it. I've been in leadership before and there's things that we did and some goals I didn't accomplish. So uh, I'm just very grateful. Um, and now I have a list of workouts. So we're getting towards the end of the show. And I just want to show you some exercises that you can do at home or you can do them at the gym. So we have some upper body exercises uh, that I do have lower body and core and cardio. So the upper body exercises, you got chest, back and shoulders, chest workouts, you have push-ups. Foot elevated, feet elevated push ups, bench press, uh, incline bench press, pull ups for your back, chin ups, rows, lat pull downs, your shoulders. You have shoulder press, lateral raises, front raises, rear deltoid raises, uh, lower body. You have squats, forward lunges, lateral lunges, step ups, glutes fire hydrants, glute bridges, sideline leg raise, donkey kicks, calves. You have seated calf raise. You have standing calf raise, single leg calf raise, and calf jumps. Core and cardio, planks, side planks, Russian twists, supermans, bird dogs, cardio, jumping jacks, cross jacks, line chops, high knees, and burpees. So these are all exercises uh, that you can do at home. And I do have uh, a list of them. And also, if you're ever interested, remember, just ask me questions. You can always uh, email me. You can always contact me on Instagram. You can always ask questions. Everyone in the chat, everyone that's commenting, you can always ask questions. And uh, I can send you videos if need be. Uh, to help you with your health journey, your fitness journey. Uh, it's all fitness, health, performance, get fit, mind, body, and soul. 
uh, if you need help with anything and I can help you. So those of you that are at home, I do have a special thing we're about to do right now. Uh, it's a group fit workout, get fit group workout. I have six exercises that I'm going to do right now on this camera, and I'm going to demonstrate them all first, okay? You have six exercises. We're just going to go through one set. Um, it'll be 30 seconds on, 30 seconds of work, 10 seconds of break. 30 seconds of work, 10 seconds of break. So I'm going to hop in this camera and I'm going to demonstrate these workouts. It should be about four minutes. Hopefully we can go a little quicker. My rest time may not be as uh, long. So uh, just remember, forgive me. We're about to go do this workout. I'm a little nervous. Um, hopefully uh, my neighbors downstairs don't hear me, but it's okay. If you're at home, go ahead and join in, get in this workout and let's do it. Okay, so the first workout that you're going to do, the first thing you're going to do is squats. Okay, so you're going to be in squat position here. First exercise, squats. Squats. Okay, second exercise. Not sure if you can see me, I'm going to do push-ups, okay? Your next exercise will be push-ups. Push-ups, push-ups, push-ups. Push-ups. After push-ups, you have alternating lunges, alternating lunges here. Alternating lunges, alternating lunges. That's the third exercise. After the third exercise, you have lateral front raise You're here, right? Sorry, lateral raise, bent over lateral raise. Okay, you're gonna just rep it out, rep it out, rep it out. Sorry, lateral to front raise. I apologize, lateral to front raise up here. Lateral to front raise. Lateral to front raise. 30 seconds. Then you have jumping jacks. Jumping jacks. Here. Then you have alternating, alternating crunches, alternating knee to elbow crunches here for 30 seconds. So those of you that are watching, give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go. Comment, leave a comment. Those of you that are ready, go ahead and get ready to go. I'm going to start it up right now. We're going to do one set, okay? We're going to do one set of these exercises. Let me get my timer. Timer, timer, timer. Okay, I'm going to give you a five-second count. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one, go. We got squats. Squats. There we go. Rep it out. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. We got 10 seconds. 10 seconds. 10 seconds, three, two, one. Now you're gonna have a 10 second rest, 10 second rest, 10 second rest. Now we're going into the push-ups, going into the push-ups. Three, two, one, go. Need to modify down, you can go on your knees. Three, two, one. 
Now you're going to take a 10 second break. Now we have alternating lunges, alternating lunges. Those of you on you and me radio, the weekend show, go ahead and hop in this workout if you haven't already. Three, two, one, go alternating lunges. Three, two, one. Ten second break, ten second break. Now we're gonna go into lateral to front raise. Three, two, one. Three, two, one, time. Okay, we have, thanks a lot for this. No problem, Mim master classes. Thanks a lot. Okay, now we're gonna go into the jumping jacks. Two more exercises, y'all, two more exercises. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Here we go, we got 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Three, two, one, time. Last one, you have alternating knee to elbow. This is for your core, you're gonna be working your core. So we had some upper body, we had some lower body, and we had some cardio with the jumping jacks and now we have core. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, time. So thank you all for today. Thank you for you and me radio. Thank you for this segment. I'm thankful for everybody. And um, make sure you follow. Make sure you follow me on every social media, uh, my personal, my business. Follow you and me radio. Uh, click the uh, like uh, and subscribe so you get the notification bell and everything. Uh, that comes with you and me radio support us and uh, just very thankful. I'm out of breath a little bit, but forgive me and everybody have a blessed day. Thank you. And now for today's spotlight, you me radio was originally founded in 2009. Back then it was called advanced media production. After winning first place in the Jamaica broilers fair play awards, the company seized operations around 2012. In December 2018 the company was rebranded, and brought back into operations with new ownership, and in February 2019, it launched its first radio station, Yumi Radio, under the call sign, WUME, DD, New York. Yumi Radio is a digital radio station, owned and operated, by UME Digital Media Inc., a digital studio and multimedia company, headquartered in Bronx, New York. Our brands are committed to inspiring, educating, and entertaining people through transformative and empowering content. Our mission is to reach 1 million households, touch 1 million lives, and showcase 1 million brands. Get the Yumi Radio app for the full experience, available via your Apple and Google Play stores. If you want to listen on the web, you may go to app.yumiradio.com or via our website at www.umeradio.com. Our content can be watched on Kareem Vision. You can also listen in via Amazon Music, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Google Podcast, Podbean, TuneU, Live 365, Spotify Stitcher Player FM Listen Notes. 
For all business inquiries, contact us at info at yumiradio.com. This station is 100% community funded. To support us, please visit yumiradio.com forward slash get involved. Subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere online at UME Radio. Thank you for supporting us. Yumi Radio, positive entertainment 24-7. She decided to jump, and it was the best decision she ever made. You are now tuned in to Business and Branding with Show. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Very, very excited to see you. Um, just wanted to thank everyone for joining us uh, on the weekend show. We have open and honest growth conversations to inspire, educate, and motivate. Our hosts are experienced, authentic, and unafraid to say it like it is. We share insights, real life experiences, and expert knowledge on topics for the empowerment of our community. And we encourage you to be the change, be open to learning new things and be willing to do the work. We want to say a big, huge thank you to all of our partners, our subscribers, our supporters, listeners, and viewers from all over the world. And we are looking forward to a great show. Just make sure that you remember to subscribe, like, share, and to click the notification bell just so when we go live and when we upload any and all new videos. So just want to thank you today. My name is Shola Smith. I am a business consultant. I am also a strategic planner. I'm a business owner, entrepreneur, and I pretty much am a huge advocate for all things entrepreneurship. So if you are uh, a, a listener or a viewer that is interested in starting your business. I just want to say congratulations to start. Um, it's a huge leap that you're going to take uh, in the right direction. And it's a pretty awesome journey. So if you are an entrepreneur or thinking about entrepreneurship, just want to say you have the support here. And hopefully this show and this platform would be able to provide you with additional resources and support in taking that journey and going in that direction. I am from originally from Brooklyn, New York. My family is from Guyana, South America. So I am a Caribbean American woman. Um, Caribbean people work very, 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 very hard. And I just want to make sure that I am empowering our community uh, of entrepreneurs because we work so hard. And I feel like the world does not see that light in order for us to be featured um, because we do, we work very, very hard. And um, we're in all different types of fields. Yes, and we work very, very, very hard. Um, I grew up watching my grandmother juggle, not only taking care of four ch children, but also working as an aide at a hospital, then coming home, taking care of the kids, taking care of the grandkids. And I, I, I don't think that I understood how important seeing that example growing up in my household, how important that was that shaped my work ethic and my work and my drive uh, when I am committed to projects and committed to completing tasks and assignments. Um, it's almost like she was like a living superhero. And that's the only way I can really explain it. But I, I really had a great example growing up on just getting stuff done and going for it and taking risk and taking the leap of faith. It's not the easiest, even though when you're doing it, um, other people may outside look in, may look at it like, oh wow, this she's really this is an easy thing. It's not easy at all. It's one of those things that hard work has to be put in in order for you to get out the results that you want to see. And um 
the only way you're going to really get those results is if you stay committed. And if you also, you put your mind to it and you don't take no for an answer, you set your goals and you kind of circle back to your why, why are you doing this? Why am I, why do I want to be a business owner? Why do I want to be an entrepreneur? Uh, why do I want to have, uh, create and build a legacy for my children or for your family? How is it that I can make additional extra income, um, in order to help, you know, kind of push the narrative forward of what it is that I want to do, what my purpose is. And so these are all questions that you need to ask to find out um, exactly why you are, your reason behind why you want to be an entrepreneur. And um, once you remember your whys, that is what's going to keep you driving forward on the days that you don't feel so good and the days that, you know, uh, it feels like nothing is happening and the days where you're feeling like you're not seeing any results. It is work. <laughs> and you cannot be afraid of the W word. It is work. Nothing comes easy on this journey. I cannot stress that enough because, you know, talking to people, you know, they're like, oh, you could do it. And it's like, yeah, you can do it too, but you have to put in the work. It's all of what happens on the behind the scenes and of what you're doing. Um, and so I'm really, really excited today because today we will be talking about New New Year Startup Capital. And so startup capital is very, very, very important uh, when you are embarking on this journey because that is how you're going to keep the engine moving. And you need to be able to have realistic goals and realistic um, ways that you're going to you know, fund this business, right? It's not only good enough to have an idea, you actually have to to have uh, some traction on the back end of it to push it forward. So today we will be talking about different startup capitals. I do have um, uh, explanation or definition of what startup capital is. So startup capital is what entrepreneurs use to pay for any and all of the required expenses involved in creating a new business. This includes um, for the initial hires, obtaining office space, permits, licensing, your licenses, your inventory, research, and market testing, product manufacturing, marketing, and any other operational expenses. So pretty much your startup capital is your fund that you're going to use in order to get this baby in front of the world. And yes, MIM's masterclass, MIM masterclass, just as you work to keep your job, you have to build your own business. Absolutely. And I agree with you 100%. If you do not do the work, the work is not going to get done. You have to treat your business as your child. Now, would you leave your child with any and anyone? No. Would you put your child in harm's way? No. Will you pay attention to your child? Yes, you will. Will you nurture your child? Yes, you will. If your child is hungry, what are you going to do? You're going to get your child some food. So you have to treat it this analogy, treat your business as a child um, that you are nurturing, that you are caring for, that you are paying attention to, that you are equipping your business with the tools um, in order to thrive. Now, I have an 18-year-old, and also I look very young, very, very young, <laughs> but I have an 18-year-old, and I also do have an 8-year-old. And so with this analogy of having a business and treating it as it is uh, your baby or your child or someone that you love and some, something that you care about, if you think about it is, if you think about it in a way that when you do have a, a, a child, you are responsible, the parents are responsible for that child up until they're 18. And once they turn 18, they become an adult. And then you have to rely that everything that you have taught this child from a newborn to 18 will start to kick in and they would be able to kind of go on their journey once they turn 18. Now, we all know once a, a teenager turns 18, that does not stop you being a mom or a dad, a parent at all. Um, but you're able to let go of the reins a little bit um, and believe that what you have instilled in those 18 years 
that it's going to yield you the results that you want to see for your child, for them to be successful, for them to be happy, for them to be whole, healthy, right? For them to have a great career, to build a family and to take on the family's legacy or whatever it is that they may want to do. You want to be able to support them as much as possible. It's the same way with your business. Now, startup capital will allow you to nurture your business because as you have the resources to move further along, you can do more. Uh, you can do a lot more with money. Um, it's even better when you have someone that believes in you and believes in your idea. They would be able to invest in your baby. So I want to be able to explain uh, the different options for startup capital. And so the first um, the first uh, topic that I want to talk about is traditional startup capital options. And so we do have a few options. These are not all, uh, but these are just a few that stood out to me that I would like to you know, just reiterate to you guys. So the first one we have is angel funding. The second option that we do have is crowdfunding. Then we also do have small business credit cards, uh, venture capital, and then we also have small business loan. Now, the first traditional option, angel funding. Angel funding is when you have investors, uh, which are typically, typically, excuse me, individuals who invest in startup or early stage companies in exchange for an equity ownership interest. Angel investing in startup has been accelerated and high profile success stories like Uber, WhatsApp, and Facebook have spurred angel investors to make multiple bets with the hopes of getting outsized returns. Now, I do want to say, in order for you to even consider putting your baby in front of angel investors, you have to be set up correctly. You cannot just go to them and say, hey, listen, I have an idea. Everyone has an idea. They need to see idea. They need to see proof and concept. They need to see the profile, the portfolio. They need to see what is it that you're offering. Are you offering products? They want to see a product line. Are you offering services? They want to see what services you are offering. They want to make sure that if they invest their money into your business, into your child, your baby, they are going to get a return in investment. The greatest angel investor concept, I will say that uh, the world is pretty much familiar with, is Shark Tank. When you go on Shark Tank, you're presenting your idea to the sharks, right? And when you present your idea to the sharks, the sharks are not thinking, hey, show, you have a great idea. The sharks want to know, if I give show a million dollars, how much equity am I going to get of her company? Now, equity is not a scary word at all. Equity is the amount of shares that you have inside of your business that you are willing comfortably, and I say this comfortably because you have these are the hard questions or these are the hard things that you have to go ahead and think about. Willingly give to an investor. They will own your company in exchange for finances. So if you know that you want to be a 100% uh, owner, you need to figure out additional ways of, you need to figure out additional ways of bill of getting capital. If you are okay with giving away portion of your baby, which would be equity, then this is something definitely for you to consider. And you have to have a number in your head. Every business owner has to have a number in their head of how much equity they will be willing to give away. Now, I will give you one tip. When you are 51% owner of your business, you are the majority owner. If it is under 51%, you are not the majority owner. If you're doing a partnership and it's 50-50, that's another story. But you have to keep in mind that when you're talking to the angel investors, um, how much are you willing to give away of your business um, in order to get financing and funding from them? So it has to be an exchange that uh, is mutually beneficial for them and also for yourself as well, because they're looking to make their money back. And they're not looking just to make back a little bit of money. They're looking to make back enough money to say, hey, that was a good deal. I got in, I got out, or I stayed in, and this is what it yielded uh, to me. So, so that's angel investing. The next topic uh, that we do have, okay, the next topic that we do have is crowdfunding. 
Um, crowdfunding is the practice of raising funding through multiple funders, often via pop popular crowdfunding websites. Crowdfunding gives startup entrepreneurs the opportunity to raise startup funding for their business and can help a company promote its products. Setting up a setting up a crowdfunding campaign is not difficult at all. Now, crowdfunding, one crowdfunding um website uh well you can use it in several but uh any any website any crowdfunding platform that you do have uh, that you're able to set up a landing page letting everyone know what your business is about um it's almost like sending out a notification to people who a group of people want to invest but they want to invest in groups so I would recommend crowdfunding because you have perfect strangers and per let me tell you something, perfect strangers believe in you more than people you know. Perfect strangers will be your best friend as far as having a business. I don't know why that is, <laughs> but for some reason, perfect strangers will be the first to invest in you before someone that you've known for years or someone that has known you all your life. I don't know why. To be honest, I really don't care why, because the perfect strangers are the ones who are going to give you that jolt to move forward. Um, Min master classes, I call them my kind strangers. These are kind people. They do not know you, and they want to invest in your idea and invest in your baby and invest in what you are doing. They are very, very kind because they do not have to do that. And I will say you don't want to get caught up too much in people who know you that won't invest in you. It does not mean that they do not believe in you. It doesn't make, mean that they're bad people. It's just that perfect strangers always see the vision beyond the people that you're, you've been familiar with. And um, familiarity breeds content. And sometimes when you're familiar with a person or familiar with the thing, you always refer back to that time period that you know that person or something like that. And you don't really see the full vision, but perfect strangers, best friends, best, 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 best friends. So crowdfunding, I think is a great option if you're looking to do group crowd, uh, uh, get group funding. The next um, startup option that we do have is small business credit cards. So a number of credit card issuers specifically cater to the small business market, and many come with special benefits, cashback rewards, airline mileage points, and other perks. Some issues, some issuers require that the card be tied to the owner's personal credit score and credit history and a guarantee from the owner. Now, the only downside of the business of uh, this business credit card is that it is attached to your personal credit. Now, if your personal credit is not up to par, um, you're going to have a, a little bit of a harder, harder time. However, it's not it, it is still dual. It's not the end of the world. You do want to make sure that while you are building your business credit, that you are kind of taking care of your personal credit on the back end. Um, I am one, and I can attest to this, when I started out in college and I was able to get a credit card, I did not understand what that means, what that meant, and the power that I had with these credit cards. You know, I was a college student eating ramen noodles, and I had a $5,000 credit card limit. Why? I do not know, but they were giving it to me, the offers, right? And so because I did not fully understand how to properly use credit, it kind of did a reverse for me. So I spent years trying to clean up the personal credit now I'm in a position where I have my business. And so you have to kind of, if the stuff don't drop off by now, you kind of have to be able to fix it and go ahead and make sure that it's the credit works for you personally and business. So while you're doing that, you want to make sure that you're building your business credit as well. You can use a business credit card to fund some of the startup um, stuff that you do have. Um, the next option that we do have um, for the business uh, startup capital is venture capital. Venture capital startup seeking financing, uh, startup seeking financing often turn to venture capital firms. These firms can provide capital strategic assistance 
introductions to potential customers, partners, and employees, and much more. Venture capitalists typically want to invest in startups that are pursuing big opportunities with high growth potential that have already shown some traction. So venture capitalists, they're looking to see what kind of money you already have. That's what they're going to go ahead and really look to see. What do you have in the pipeline? Do you have purchase orders in the pipeline? Do you have something big coming up? What have you done so far that you need our finances to go ahead and move forward um, with your business? So the next option that we do have is business small business loans. Small business loans are available from a, a large number of traditional and alternative lenders. These types of loans can help grow your business, fund new research and development, help you expand into new territories, enhance sales and marketing efforts, and also allow you to hire new people and much more. And so the SBA uh, is a great resource for small business loans. I would say you have to pick and choose what type of loan and the terms and conditions would work best for you. Now, every loan, not only small business loan, but every loan is not ideal with the terms and conditions because the interest rates are high. So you want to make sure that you do pay attention to the terms and conditions of the loan uh, to, to know exactly what is going to work well. Uh, for you. As far as paying the loan back, are you going to have enough money to pay the loan off in a shorter time span than what your terms and conditions are? So next we have uh, more of the non-traditional uh, startup capital options. And this is very important because your personal savings you can use your personal savings, but you have to make sure that you have a plan uh, put in place in order to, you know, read that back up and um, make sure that you put that money back and make sure that you're able to thrive. So you can, of course, fund your business with your own personal savings. Another option is to earn more money. Uh, you have two options to widen the gap between your income and your expenses, spending less and saving more. Now, I know that there's some people that... Um, do take on uh, some side jobs or some have some hobbies that are uh, pretty lucrative. I would say for me, um, back in the day, what I used to do is I would do hair, and of course that took that was able to give me a little bit more income coming in on the side. Um, you know, anything that you would be able to utilize get some extra additional funds, and then you can throw it into your business. Um, approaching friends and family. Not everyone has a rich uncle, but entrepreneurs who do can often borrow money for no or low interest and no points or fees. Now, the family members, you're going to have to convince a little bit more, and you're going to also have to have them buy into what you are doing. If you do have friends and family who are able, who are in a great position, uh, who you trust, uh, that you are able to go ahead and borrow money from. I think that's a great option if that works for you. Also, business grants, government programs, um, entrepreneurship on initiatives, minority owned, which is very, very big. A lot of, of us minorities don't really take advantage of uh, being, a min being labeled as a minority owned business. Um, that profile alone qualifies us for additional uh, programs and incentives that the government has just sitting there waiting on us to get the tools, get the knowledge, and to put us in action. Also, women-owned businesses, we have our own separate profile as well, and veterans. And I thought that this was very, very important because you don't really hear a lot of uh, veteran-owned businesses. And so by being a veteran, if you've uh, served this country and you've uh, uh, been in the military, you do have additional funds or additional fund additional funds for you in order to become an entrepreneur. Um, and I think that the veterans, there are a lot of people who have served our country that probably do not even know that they can classify as a veteran-owned business to take advantage of some of these benefits. Um, the next uh, topic that I did want to talk about was 
resources. And so if you have a pen and paper, which I hope you do, or you can go back to the video and um, catch the replay. Seedinvest.com is a great option um, for startup capital. Crowdfunding.com, SBA.gov, that's your small business association. IFundWomen.com is a great resource for women-owned uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, they actually do funding um, specifically for women-owned businesses. Now, men, that doesn't mean that you guys can't take advantage, just not advantage of this <laughs> resource, but there are tons of resources out here. But the IFundWomen uh, is solely just for women. GoFundMe, um, that's where you can actually create a GoFundMe page and explain to people what exactly it is that you are doing and kind of share the link on your uh, social media to let them know what is it that you're doing so that way they can go ahead and uh, sow a seed into your business. Seedup.com is another great resource in order to uh, get uh, funding. And also MyCoachMinistry.com. So this is a special, uh, this is a special one. And this MyCoachMinistry.com is one of our producers, a uh, coach Raquel. She has her own coaching ministry, where, but she also has opportunities and resources that we would like to go ahead and share for January 2022's um, funding opportunities. So I just want to go ahead and just let you know that you can actually go to MyCoachMinistry.com. And you can actually check out these opportunities that they have the free. These are free opportunities to get funding for your business. The only way that you're going to get funding for your business is if you pursue and you actively do your research to go and go after it. It's not going to come after you. You have to be the one to initiate it and to go after it. So I just want to thank everyone today. Thank you for all of the listeners. Thank you for all of the um, the viewers who are leaving comments. Um, please definitely share your experiences so that way, you know, our listeners and viewers can see that they're not alone. It's it's not something that you, it's, this is not a journey that you want to be alone anyway. This is a journey where you want to see get align yourself with like-minded people in order to get your business started or get your business out there or market your business and your products. And it helps if you have someone else who is on the same journey uh, with you. Uh, thank you, DeAndre. DeAndre said, amen. Yes. Amen to that too, because you want, you want to make sure that you feel that you're not alone. It's already uncharted waters that you're taking a risk, you're taking a leap of faith, and you want to make sure that when you go ahead and you're on this journey, the goal is to stay on the journey. You don't want to backtrack and you don't want you do not want the excuse of the financial component to be the reason why you do not press and move forward. And so I hope that today's show gave you guys some good tips and gave you guys some good resources to know where to kind of go to kind of get some of this startup capital in order to start your business, expand your business, or to grow your business, because there's different steps and different phases. So I do want to thank you. I thank you so much for today. In case you missed any of our episodes, definitely go ahead and get the Yumi Radio app um, at app.yumiradio.com to listen or to watch this or any other episodes. You can go ahead and uh, tune in. You can also listen in to Yumi Radio on all major digital platforms, including Apple, the Apple Store, Google Play Store, iTunes, iHeartRadio, tune in. Google, Podbean, TuneU, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Listen Notes, Carib Vision on TV, You Me Radio on Connected TV. So definitely want to thank you. Shout out to all of our sponsors. And hopefully these resources would be able to help assist you uh, on your entrepreneur journey. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have a fantastic time. Make sure, oh, I, I did forget, let's end this with a prayer. 
God, we thank you. We thank you for this awesome day. We thank you for all of our listeners, all of our viewers, everyone that is connected to this uh, broadcast, everyone from the producers to all of the other hosts um, on this platform. We just thank you right now for your protection, for safety. For God, we thank you that everyone who would love to start and on this journey, we thank you, Lord, that you would give them the insight and you would give them the extra drive and the motivation to keep them motivated in order to start, Father God. We thank you that you would align them and open up the door for them in order to have a mentor or a coach to help them along the way. We just thank you. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for allowing us another day on earth to fulfill your will. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic rest of your Saturday. And tune in to the next uh, show. Bye. And now for today's Spotlight. Yumi Radio was originally founded in 2009. Back then, it was called Advanced Media Production. After winning first place in the Jamaica Broilers Fair Play Awards, the company seized operations around 2012. In December 2018 the company was rebranded and brought back into operations with new ownership, and in February 2019, it launched its first radio station, Yumi Radio, under the call sign, WUME, DB, New York. Yumi Radio is a digital radio station, owned and operated, by UME Digital Media Inc., a digital studio and multimedia company, headquartered in Bronx, New York. Our brands are committed to inspiring, educating, and entertaining people through transformative and empowering content. Our mission is to reach 1 million households, touch 1 million lives, and showcase 1 million brands. Get the Yumi Radio app for the full experience, available via your Apple and Google Play stores. If you want to listen on the web, you may go to app.yumiradio.com or via our website at www.umeradio.com. Our content can be watched on Kareeb Vision. You can also listen in via Amazon Music, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Google Podcast, Podbean, TuneU, Live 365, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM, Listen Notes. For all business inquiries, contact us at info at yumiradio.com. This station is 100% community funded. To support us, please visit yumiradio.com forward slash get involved. Subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere online at UME Radio. Thank you for supporting us. UME Radio, positive entertainment 24-7. She is a lifestyle engineer and a digital wealth creator, passionate about financial empowerment. You're tuned in to Wealth Mindset with Marsha Gay Miles. Happy weekend. Happy Saturday. Good morning, everyone. Now, it is said that our lives are transformed when our minds are renewed. A wealthy life is therefore the product of a wealthy mindset. Wealth Mindset is a show that seeks to renew the mind with proven plans, principles, and philosophies that will establish the right paradigm for prosperity, the right paradigm for prosperity in all areas of life. With the wealthy mindset, entrepreneurs and wealth seekers will be empowered to activate, to innovate, to create, to elevate, and to serve in order to thrive, not just survive. We will inspire people of color to create wealth, to leave an inheritance for their children's children and a legacy in them, a legacy that creates a brand new generation of wealthy mindsets. Hi there, everyone. I am Marsha Gay Miles, and welcome to the Wealth Mindset Show. Now, today we're going to do things a little bit differently. Last year on our show, we had a selection of experienced and passionate, purpose driven experts. And I just want to reflect a little on some of what they shared. Yes. So I will be sharing with you five minute excerpts from four of our, our top four most watched interviews. And I will also give my reaction. So 
let's begin, shall we? This is our recap show. It's good to reflect. It's good to reminisce. It's good to remember. It's good to recount so that we can use those lessons and renew our minds and move forward into 2022 with that level of renewed mind so that we can have the wealthy mindset. So our first video is from my interview with, I affectionately call her Auntie Marlene. Her name is Mrs. Marlene Stotts. Marlene Stotts has over 20 years of experience in the financial services sector, combining the fundamentals of financial planning with sound biblical principles. I love that. As a former athlete, she understands it takes discipline to achieve goals, including the financial ones that we have. Now, she's married to Uncle Mike, the wonderful Michael Stutz, for over 30 years. And here is our excerpt from Auntie Marlene's interview. What's a wealth mindset? Well, to me, a wealth mindset is a set of beliefs, mm. behaviors, and habits that guides a person to make decision in the in in the three m area what i call the three m's of money how you make it how you manage it and how you multiply it so they are actually beliefs behaviors and habits now let me clarify this not because somebody has an abundance of money mean that they have a wealth mentality and not because someone has Limited resources mean they have a poverty mentality. Hmm. It is all dependent on your ability to manage. When we talk about the power of the talent, hmm. the master gave each man according to his ability. But they were supposed, their goal is to, he had expected to have them to increase his money. So the laws, the first law that govern wealth and abundance is the um is the mental transformation if your prosperity to me depends more on on a product of your philosophy and your mm -hmm. paradigm than on your territory where you were born you could be wealthy in jamaica or trinidad and be broke in a country that appears so prosperous like america so that's what I, what i see is habits beliefs and behavior that guide the ability to make manage and multiply money let me tell you something jesus when he saved when he healed 10 leper mm -hmm. and one came back jesus asks did i not heal 10 yesterday where is the other nine the church too long has only focused on that 10 on that one hmm. god cares about a hundred percent of your money so we cannot get bogged down with, well, are you a tither? No, you, if you tithe, but then you blow another 90, then you are not a good steward of your money anyway. So God wants us to be a good steward of 100% of the money he has entrusted us into our hand and not be so focused, well, did I give tithe? Did I give offering? Did I give first fruit? Did I, did I get a profit offering? Those are all things under the law. Mm -hmm. We got our mindset should be, Am I a good steward of 100% of the money that God put into my hand so I can open the door for more? Because money is looking for good managers, not just a good title. Oh, that's powerful. That's powerful. All right. I have another question. You mentioned <laughs> it earlier. You mentioned it earlier. You said behaviors, beliefs, no, be beliefs first, because it starts in the foundation of beliefs then behaviors, and then habits. Mm -hmm. And of course, of course, you think, you feel, you do, and what you do repeatedly becomes the habit. Mm -hmm. let's, let's now dive into beliefs. You speak a lot of Christianity, of course, principle-based Jesus. So therefore, I would then assume and, and share with the audience here that your beliefs are on that foundation. What are some of the principles of that belief that has allowed for you to have that strong identity and confidence to know that you can create wealth. I believe the, the people who follow the doctrine of Jesus Christ have an advantage. Mm. 
because our advantage is in our faith. Mm -hmm. The faith that we understand that, and I'm not going to quote scriptures because I know you have a wide audience, that whatever I put my hand to prosper, that there is a, a, a unforeseen um, or unknowing power that guides me, that mm -hmm. whatever I do, I cannot fail. That I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water and whatever I touch prospers. Right. And when you have that confident, not in yourself, but in whose you are, and you mm. know that what you what you put your hand to will never fail, you will walk in a level of prosperity that man cannot define. And that is the confidence we have. It's not in ourselves, it's in who we are, whose we serve, and who we belong to. And that starts with our faith. And that, to me, is the advantage. When somebody tells me I have nothing, I say, no, you have faith. Because without faith, you can't do anything that will blow the mind of the world. It takes faith to do it. The first thing I would Listen, I am watching that interview. And personally, I am being totally impacted by it in a new way. That's why the word says that faith comes by hearing the word hearing is present continuous. We have to continually hear the information so that our minds can then be renewed. And then when we renew our minds, we then transform our lives. It's a process. And I'm listening to that and I'm, my mind is being blown. Now, I, I mean, I saw a few comments by our viewers. I saw Satin Brownie asking about where can we find her about her book? So her book, Auntie Marlene's book, Marlene Stotts, can be found on Amazon. And that book is called When Money Fails. When Money Fails. You see, I know we have a wide audience, but she spoke about when, you're, when your beliefs are rooted on people of faith, Christianity, people of faith, believers in God. We have faith as our edge. And one thing is that God has given us this amazing guidebook that teaches us everything that we need to know, that prepares us. And in that book, it speaks about prosperity and it speaks about times of when money fails and therefore what the people had to do. So she really stood on those principles to be able to now write that book. And you can absolutely get the book on our partner website, familyalltheway.com forward slash wealth. You can find the book there as well. So I am super excited for all of you entering 2022, getting that information, you can go and watch the full interview on our webs on our YouTube page. It's, it's sitting there recorded. And of course, you can go to Family All The Way for those as well. And please get the book because that book will renew your mind and transform your life. Woo, that was powerful. That was powerful. Wow, I needed that reminder for 2022. I know you did as well. Now, our next second clip is coming from an interview I had with Reshima Kelly Williams. Now, I actually have known Reshima since high school. And Reshima, though her vocational and her professional training is in marketing, that's where she's trained in. And of course, she has been working with some of the major telecommunication and, um, and data provision services here in the Caribbean in that capacity. One thing I can tell you about Reshima is that when we, we heard Auntie Marlene talk about your beliefs are formed by the environment you grew up in. You see her environment being led by a mother that was very diligent with being disciplined with money. Reshima has been a very savvy money um, manager. You heard Auntie Marlene speak about being a good steward of your money. Money is attracted to those who are going to manage it well. That's why Reshima is successful. That's the key. She's managing her money well. Now, what else does Rashima have to say about money? Check it out here in this clip. The first thing I would say is, you know, what is consumerism? And it's important to understand what brands and businesses are trying to achieve. They also take the time to understand who the consumer is. Because as a brand or if you're offering a product or a service, then you need to be satisfying a need. You need to be feeding into a niche, whatever that niche is. So it's important to understand who your target is. Fine. All of us are consumers. Everybody, we have that trigger. Got mm -hmm. it. But when you look at the statistics, the minorities, people of color, they're the biggest consumers. 
So we 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 operate in the smallest wealth pie, the smallest the most smallest piece of the wealth pie, mm -hmm. but yet still we spend the most. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I think it's a part of it. I do believe it's 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 marketing, mm -hmm. and I think what we would have done is tap into the consumer's mind. And although we have the smallest piece of the pie, mm -hmm. as you said, people of color, we like nice things. We like the finer things. We will do what we can in order to get the things that we want. Sometimes not to our benefit because sometimes persons will spend outside of what they have, which right. is where our conversation and what you are trying to bring across our own wealth mindset Yes. Um, you know, it's where you need to create the balance, but mm -hmm. it's very easy for us to do that because it's natural for us. We want to look nice. We like the finer things in life and we tend to do that sometimes without thought, which is why there is a, there is a saying that says that's why the rich will remain rich because yes. when they have money to do things, they are more likely mm -hmm. to use the money to earn more money. When we earn our money, the minute we earn it, we're so happy. We're ready to celebrate that win. Mm -hmm. And that's our, that's our natural response. Yes. You know, and, and we do that without thought sometimes. But I do believe that we are changing the narrative, even mm -hmm. using a platform like this, where mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about it. And there are lots of programs. There are lots of books talking mm -hmm. about financial wellness and, and why it is important and persons wanting to retire earlier than the average age of retirement because we also want to, to live a little bit more and not yes. work all the time. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much. And that is so true. You know, as you're speaking, I really thought of that image and uh, we see those memes ever so often when they mm -hmm. compare side by side a, a true wealthy person and Yes. So it happens that the, the other person is always black, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the gold chain and the suits mm -hmm. or the fanciness that we know was a ton of money. Mm -hmm. And then you have a Mark Zuckerberg that has mm -hmm. on a t-shirt and jeans and some <laughs> New Balance sneakers. Yeah. He is one of the wealthiest men in the world. So you're right, we do have that pride in Absolutely. all the appearance and that, yeah. Wow. But I can tell you, the mm -hmm. mindset is shifting. Mm -hmm. um, the younger generation, you know, from our age group and, and younger than us, the millennials, the Gen yes. Zs, I share with my, my circles more often than not that one of the things that I would take from, you know, the Gen Z and the millennials is that they're not afraid to challenge the status quo. Mm. They're not afraid to, to push the envelope. And a lot of them are seeking to be entrepreneurs at a very earlier stage in their lives versus us who were kind of trained and and taught to do a nine to five in corporate. What I observed my mother doing is always saving, mm. always putting something aside, always preparing, and she was consistent. Wow. Um, so in terms of growing up and preparing for back to school, once school closes and she gets the book list, my books were purchased from the earlier part of summer, not in September when everybody is in the back to school mayhem. That was not, and, and, and I think I get that level of preparation and thoroughness from her mm -hmm. because I get, I get anxious when I don't feel prepared or if I don't have the money to do something. So I mm -hmm. always prepare. Another thing that, that she did, which is very traditional to Jamaica, is what we refer to as partner or for the mm -hmm. person in the global landscape it's it's a savings plan that you would have where you put money monthly and then you get a lump sum over a period of time right you know, it was important for her to do that so that she could prepare for what is to come so she always um took her payout in preparation for back to school mm. or so any big spend that she had she prepared for it there are listen you know what i love about um going through remembering and recounting from a lot of these conversations is how a lot of the same principles are intertwined and interweaved between each person i love that wow 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 i have a comment here saying more, most persons are money hungry um and they forgot forget about researching right the learning your niche and investing in learning them before demanding or asking of them. That's powerful. That's so powerful. 
Yes, she loves what she says about companies learning their consumers, entrepreneurs sometimes, sometimes fail for that. You know, that's what, if you saw my reaction when she was saying that, that's when I my wheels were churning the most. That my wheels churned the most when I thought about and recounted and said, boy, you know, they're really thinking about, or Auntie Marlene said it, our beliefs drive our behaviors. And our behaviors therefore become habits. And what a large company is doing is they're looking at what does a person believe, right? Therefore, how do you know what they believe? What do they do? Their behaviors, right? And what do they do over and over and over again? So if you have a certain sector that you're trying to target as an entrepreneur, you know, and I'm sure uh, my dear friend Shola will be able to expound on this on one of the future episodes that she's doing. But I'm here to tell you this. One of the things that we have to therefore do as an entrepreneur is to identify who is the target market. So who do you want this product for? And therefore then, what is their behavior? Study it. Study how do they act? How do they think? How do they operate? How do, you, how do they spend their money? Because you're an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is someone that exchanges a product or a service, right? How do they spend their money? And if you can identify what is that factor that allows for them to spend and you market in that way, you put your product and position it in that way, you're going to get that money from them. That's a little tip for the entrepreneurs. That was a tip for me. I'm an entrepreneur, right? So I, my gosh, oh, more nuggets are coming out of these episodes. And thank you for that viewer for that comment because absolutely true, absolutely true. All right, we're going to continue. Third clip here is from an interview with Julian Morrison. Julian is an assistant manager with one of the largest private equity companies here in Jamaica, Proven Management Limited. And let me tell you something. Julian is somebody that's also um, leading Wealth Watch JA. That's his company. And he's also, a, 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 what do you call that, a panelist that contributes, that helps to shape the mindset for investors in Jamaica. There's a show called Taking Stock that talks about our stock market, which is actually one of the leading stock markets in the world, Jamaica's stock market. And on that show, he always gives advice about what's going on with certain companies and what would, does he think about buying certain stocks? So we're talking about a young man, a millennial, he's just turning 30 years old, that was able to come and add so much value to our lives on that particular episode. So check it out. Plan that you would have where you put money monthly and then you get a lump sum over a period of time right that that shows signs so it's almost as if we're being communicated to to circumstances so if you if you spoke to me at 21 22 i don't think i would have told you that i was in private equity but i'll tell you a very funny story and just how just how chaotic life can seem but everything still has a grand purpose. So when I was in high school, I, I listened to a lot of hip hop music heavily. Jay-Z was my artist. Right now still, but Jay-Z was my artist because Jay-Z at the time was doing things differently. He marketed himself as an executive. At the time, nobody else in hip hop did that in an in overt way to say, hey, I'm an executive. I'm on my album cover in suits. Nobody else did that. Unless they were doing some kind of mafia kind of thing, which which had a theme in the work, but it wasn't about that. It really was about him being an executive. So he's saying he can be a, co a cool person mm -hmm. and an executive at the same time. Um, so I was really drawn, drawn to that. And apart from the music and the rapping and stuff, at the time, Jay-Z did a lot more interviews and he was talking about what it was like running Def Jam, going from just being an artist on the label to being an executive there, all his experiences. And what made it more interesting is the fact that he used to invest in companies a lot. So he bought the 4040 Club. Of course, he was a shareholder in Rockaware from before, also Rockefeller. Yes. And there are also other things that he did. And that piqued my interest because I never thought about people investing in companies. He did a lot of venture capital and what we call private equity now because all of those ventures were unlisted. Mm. So that really sparked my interest in private equity from, from, from when I was in fourth form in high school, but I just never heard of private equity before and he didn't use those words. But I said to myself, okay, he's doing deals and music. 
I wanted to use that music too because I figured that um you could use you could use the the the, the um the opportunity of one to feed the other. Mm-hmm. So I said, all right, cool. And I went into music production and did a lot of work, you know, extensive work. Um, we're talking about EPs, we're talking about albums, we're talking about singles, all kind of stuff. And that was really, <laughs> that was a journey in and of itself. But at the end of the day, people always said to me that they saw me more as a exit kind of guy, you know, the, mm-hmm. uh, like a suit. Or one of those people. I don't know why, but kind of just said that. I agree. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, but Marsha, we met late. This is like 10 years ago. Okay, so, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, um, so I mean, I did the music and I did a lot of research. I spoke to I spoke to a producer who worked on Shaggy's album, Hot Shots album that went diamond and he was using with me and he said, boy, you know, there are different avenues to achieve what they want to achieve. He didn't say it in these words, but he was saying that there might be some misalignment with your specific approach. Now, I'm somebody who bets big. I bet on myself and I bet big, so I throw everything mm. into what I'm doing. So at the time, I didn't feel so good. I, I felt like I had to start over from scratch. But I said to myself, here I am, a university graduate. Let me use my, my background in economics to do deals. If I'm not going to use music to do deals, then why not use my econ degree to do deals? Uh-huh. And that was one of the better discoveries I've made in my life. You know, I just built on that. I have a knack for econ as a subject, and I've used that to really pull myself up the rope, so to speak. And right. One thing just led to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. And here I am today. I mean, I've been through a lot. Um, I was an intern at Ministry of Finance, but I was in my head, I still wanted to do music at that time. That was 10 years ago. Then I was an intern at Sajikor, and uh-huh. that's when I started learning about corporate structure, about conglomerates, how companies actually come together to form <laughs> groups and so on. And from there, I went into advising clients, client advisory. So I started in insurance first, then after I decided I want to go deeper into securities, and I started at JMMB. And when I was at JMMB, I realized that while I had a special connection with the clients and I learned a lot from advisory, um, my boss at the time was saying to me, you know, you'd be a very good analyst. He didn't say it in those words, but he was saying that my orientation is close to that era. So I transitioned and I became an analyst. Um, and the rest is history, you know? A lot of people have these goals or when they do get clear on the goals, right? Or the desires or the vision, they they forget the step is that you have to take action, right? You can't just assume things are just going to happen to you and life is going to come to you. You got to get up every single day and take action, right? And that looks different for everybody, whether it's taking action mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, occupationally, whatever. You got to get clear on what is it that you need to do now, right? What steps you need to make in order to create the life that you want, in order to achieve your goals and, and attract the desires and all that good stuff, right? But first, yes. that's that's the step that you need to take is once you get clear on who you are, what you want, right? Then you make that decision, like I said earlier, then you got to actually get up and go, okay, I'm going to do what I need to do, right? Listen, so many nuggets. Success leaves clues. There are many ways to achieve the success that you're desiring. Maybe the path you're pursuing is not the one you should be on. And finally, we just heard from Brooke Wright, entrepreneur, mentor, author, and public speaker on the fact that as an entrepreneur, you need to take action. So let me tell you this. If I'm going to summarize everything, I'm going to say this. If you want success in 2022, here's what you need to be doing. Number one, renew your mind. Renew your mind. Number two, be willing to understand that you need to take action every day. And finally, number three, understand that there are many ways to it. Many ways, not just one path. Sit down, pray about it, think about it, and really look within and see what it is that you want to achieve. Make the make that plan, get those goals out, write the vision, make it plain. And then we're going to pursue it going forward from there. There are going to be more episodes coming in 2022 that will equip you and empower you and enrich you to step into the greatness you're looking for 
to create that wealth mindset so that you can see in December 2022 the success that you desire. It's been your girl, Marsha Gay Miles here. You can find me on all socials at that name, Marsha Gay Miles. But most importantly, you should cop the books that we dropped throughout this episode at familyalltheway.com forward slash wealth. Wealth, 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 wealth. My book for the year, Think and Grow Rich because it all starts in the mind. So as we wrap up this episode, I just want to encourage each and every one of you to ensure that you like, share, and subscribe. Click that notification bell for not notifications of when we go live, when we upload new episodes. You don't want to miss out. You see how much you missed out on? You see how much value came from those? Here's what. Go back. Watch them again. Take your notes. Watch them with a fresh mind. Take those notes and then share it with a friend and make sure you're here every Saturday for the weekend show for future Wealth Mindset Show. Hold your vision. Keep your faith. Stay in gratitude. Live on purpose. Bye for now. God bless you all. And now for today's spotlight. Yumi Radio was originally founded in 2009. Back then, it was called Advanced Media Production. After winning first place in the Jamaica Broilers Fair Play Awards, the company seized operations around 2012. In December 2018 the company was rebranded and brought back into operations with new ownership, and in February 2019, it launched its first radio station, Yumi Radio, under the call sign, WUME, DB, New York. Yumi Radio is a digital radio station, owned and operated, by UME Digital Media Inc., a digital studio and multimedia company, headquartered in Bronx, New York. Our brands are committed to inspiring, educating, and entertaining people, through transformative and empowering content. Our mission is to reach 1 million households, touch 1 million lives, and showcase 1 million brands. Get the Yumi Radio app for the full experience, available via your Apple and Google Play stores. If you want to listen on the web, you may go to app.yumiradio.com or via our website at www.umeradio.com. Our content can be watched on Kareem Vision. You can also listen in via Amazon Music, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Google Podcast, Podbean, TuneU, Live 365, Spotify, Stitcher, Player FM Listen Notes. For all business inquiries, contact us at info at yumiradio.com. This station is 100% community funded. To support us, please visit yumiradio.com forward slash get involved. Subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere online at UME Radio. Thank you for supporting us. UME Radio, positive entertainment 24-7. Good morning, 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 everyone. How are you? Welcome, welcome, welcome back. It is Weekends with Jesse. How have you been? How was your week? If you are a new listener or a new viewer, thank you for coming. And if you are tuned in, you come in constantly every week or listen every week, welcome. It is lovely to have you back. Let me tell you a little bit about Weekends with Jesse. It is a community development program promoting healthy life for a wealthy community. Our show is a resource of the Black community educating viewers on health issues and providing access to a network of Black business owners and entrepreneurs providing support in healthcare. Now, let me tell you what is coming up on today's show. First up, we have Jesse's Life Lessons, and we're going to talk about organization, National Organ Organized Day. Next up, we have Community Health Check, The Power of Food. And last but not least, we have The Importance of Gut Health with our special guest, Megan Sylvester. So let's get right into it. Today's life lesson is about organization. Were you aware that yesterday was National Organization Day? Yes, it was observed on January 14th, 2022. And I wanted to highlight this because it just so happened to be connected to a lesson that I learned. Even though we may still be in a new year kind of mind frame, I want to talk about how being organized will improve your physical and mental health. I want to share you five ways that it can, and this is coming from shape.com. Number one, it can reduce stress and depression. It can help you eat better. It will help you stick to your workouts or your routine. 
it can improve your relationships and it will boost your productivity. And this week really was my lesson because I tend to be, ever since I was little growing up, I would make a mountain out of a molehill, this my mom said. And she always said, don't make a mountain out of a molehill, just take it step by step by step. And then everything I do, I literally, I have apps on my phone, I'll do like a little bullet and clean it off, clean it off, clean it off, or I write it down. If I don't do that and I get those things done for the day, I'm good, but I need to step by step. I can't be overwhelmed with so much. So that's a tip for you guys. If you struggle with organization, it could be as simple as email this person, clean the kitchen, fold laundry, and put it away. Like so something so simple would really, really improve your life and quality of life. So now let's get into our community help check. So today we are going to talk about the power of food. Now, according to WHO, uh, World Health Organization reports that obesity is one of the most serious global public health issues in the 21st century. Obesity is a major risk factor for diseases such as cardiovascular disease, uh, several common cancers, diabetes, and osteoarthritis. From WHO? the definition of obesity versus overweight is as follows. Overweight and obesity are defined as abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that, prevent, that presents a risk to health. In adults, a body mass index or BMI over 25 is considered overweight and over 30 is obese. In children aged between five to 19 years old, overweight BMI for, a, for their age greater than one standard deviation above who growth reference median and obesity is a standard deviation greater than two. Excuse me here. Now a study, a 2014 study from the CDC that is Centers for Disease Control and Prevention showed that in 2011 to 2014, the prevalence of obesity was just over 36% in adults and 17% in youth. The, pre the prevalence of obesity was higher in women, 38.3%, than in men, 34.3%. Among youth, no, different, no difference was seen by either sex. Three, the prevalence of obesity was higher among middle age, 40. 40.2% and older, 30.37% adults and younger adults, and that is 32.3%. And last but not least, the prevalence of obesity was higher among non-Hispanic white, non-Hispanic black, Hispanic adults and youth than among non-Hispanic Asian adults and youth. Now, with that being said, I want to share a video clip from the Africa Diaspora News Channel discussing food death culture in the Black community. Let's see what they have to say. And while that video is about to come up, maybe we could talk about it with our guest that is in studio with us, Megan Sylvester. It's Weekends with Jesse a resource for the community. Black health is black wealth. Saturdays at 10 a.m. Be the light. Good morning. Good morning. Can you morning, hear me? Morning, Megan. Yes, I can hear you great. I can hear you great. Thank you so All much. All right, I am having trouble. I can't hear you. Yo. Hello? Can you hear me now? Megan, can you hear me? Because I can, I can hear you. Am I muted on, on your end? Megan can't hear me. Okay, guys, give me one second, everyone. Producers on the back end, can you hear me? 
Okay, I'm loud and clear. Megan, it might be on your end. Um, but while we get this situated, I want to introduce Megan and tell you a little bit about her. So today we have a special guest. We have Megan, and she's going to talk to us about the importance of gut health. Megan Sylvester is a nutritionist and a colon hydrotherapist in the Atlanta area. She believes that food has a large impact on our health, and especially in the Black community. We need to become more aware of that. Megan is also the owner of Green Herbs Wellness Center, which offers colon cleansing and detox services. All right. So let me know. Okay. So I just got some news that the video is about to come up, but let me know, everyone, how do you feel about your gut. Do you feel that you're eating right? Do you notice, for example, if you eat certain things that your belly just kind of like, I can't do that. I can't do that. For me, I don't want to say I'm lactose intolerant, but I am for sure lactose sensitive um, with certain things. If it's sour cream or certain cheeses, I may not be able to have, but I could have pizza and everything. Um, I got pizza and everything like that. But um, let me know in the comment section down below, what are some issues that you're having with your gut, with your health? What are some foods that you have to avoid or some foods that you are okay, that, okay with, that your body is okay with? And do we have Megan in studio? Megan, can you come back? We missed you because I got some questions. Okay, before Megan comes back, we are going to play the video um, that we mentioned earlier. This Chicken is from the Africa Diaspora News Channel discussing food debt culture in the black community. Then we'll go to Megan. Let's roll it. Chicken, pork. These are some of the soul food. This is soul food. Chicken, pork, usually fried. Not supposed to be eating pork. I don't care what your pastor pork chop slave theology taught you. They don't have no solutions. They've led you to obesity. They've led you to diabetes. Most high answering none of your prayers for healing. You've been praying for years and years. Half the church on the sick and shut in list. They locked down like everybody else. They don't have no answers and no solutions just like anybody else. So don't tell me, don't talk to me about no slave theology. Don't try to quote me, no misquote me, no scriptures and so forth. You don't know what you're talking about. The Most High mm -hmm. says, don't eat this. If you eat it, you're going to be destroyed. We're being destroyed right now. Fried fish. Cut. Most of the fish we, we ain't supposed to. We're not supposed to, to consume right bottom here. eaters. We have to stop being stiff neck, hard head and rebellious. Most High. So that was a short little clip from Africa Diaspora News channel. Now let's get into our special guest with Megan. Megan will be coming back soon and shortly. Let me know in the comment section down below how you are liking this. How is everyone doing? Please let me know in the comment section below. What are some tips that you have for food, if you are struggling with food, what are some ways that you find that it will help your body help absorb it and help it be aligned? One way that I love to do um, is I kind of pre-prep my food and I measure it and I try not to eat in three big meals. Oh, we have Megan back. Hi, Megan. How are you? We are good. Can you hear me now? Good morning. I think you can hear me. Can uh, you hear me? I'm sorry. The sound is still going in and your sound is going in and out for, for me. But, um, to the computer i was on the computer and i went to the phone and i'm back on the computer and both of them are kind of 
I don't know on the my phone it's not showing the video we can see but, you um yes I did want to talk about gut health today and um and so there I'm sorry we can we can see you So we have some questions here for you up above. Um, if you can't hear me well, and we'll type it to you, and you could just go ahead and answer those questions. Are you able to hear us now? She is frozen now. So we are having some um, issues here, but let me know how passionate about food are you and what is your relationship with food? I know that mine is pretty, pretty good, pretty average. Um, but I want to read to you if in the meantime, while Megan comes on, read to you some health issues in regards to the gut. So we'll talk about what's an unhealthy gut and how health affects you. And give me one moment. And this information is coming from um, healthline.com. So with that being said, let's get into it. Some seven signs that your gut is unhealthy. So the first one is an upset stomach. Some stomach disturbances like gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, and heartburn can be signs of an unhealthy gut. A balanced gut will have less difficulty processing food and eliminating waste. Two is a high sugar diet. A diet high in processed foods and added sugars can decrease the amount of good bacteria in your gut. This imbalance can cause increased sugar cravings, which can damage your gut still further. High amounts of refined sugars, particularly those in high fructose corn syrup, have been linked to increased inflammation in the body. Inflammation can be the precursor to a number of diseases. Number three, Unintentional weight changes. Gaining or losing weight without making changes to your diet or exercise habits may be a sign of an unhealthy gut. An imbalanced gut can impair a body's ability to absorb nutrients, regulate blood sugar, and store fat. Weight loss may be caused by intestinal, by intestinal bacteria overgrowth, which is SIBO, while weight gain may be caused by insulin resistance or the urge to overeat due to decreased absorption. Number four, sleep disturbances or constant fatigue. An unhealthy gut may contribute to sleep disturbances such as insomnia or poor sleep and therefore lead to chronic fatigue. The majority of the body's serotonin, a hormone that affects mood and sleep, is produced in the gut. So gut damage can impair your ability to sleep as well. Some sleep disturbances also have been linked for a risk of fibromyalgia. Number five, skin irritation. Skin conditions like eczema may, may be, let's say this again. Skin irritations may be uh, related to a damaged gut, such as eczema. Inflammation in the gut caused by a poor diet or food allergies may cause increased leaking, quote unquote, or certain proteins out into the body, which can in turn irritate the skin and cause conditions such as eczema. Number six, autoimmune conditions. Medical researchers are continually, are continually finding new evidence of the impact of the gut 
on the immune system. It's thought that an unhealthy gut may increase systematic inflammation and alter the proper functioning of the immune system. This can lead to autoimmune diseases where the body attacks itself than um, attacks itself rather than harmful invaders. And last but not least, some fluid intolerances. I previously mentioned I have not necessarily intolerance um, per se, but sensitivity, I would say, to lactose. So some of them could be um, foods that you may have an allergic allergy to, or for example, um, lactose. And Megan, are you here? I'm here. <laughs> okay, we are here. We are ready. You can hear me. I can hear you. We yes. got <laughs> Okay. So Megan, uh, first question, please tell us a little bit about yourself, um, what you do, and how do you relate to the topic of gut health? Yes. Um, okay. So my name is Megan Sylvester. I am a nutritionist and a colon hydrotherapist. Um, I also have multiple sclerosis. So I deal with, I've had to deal personally with a lot of gut health issues and um, vitamin issues, nutritional deficiencies, and other things like that. So um, yeah, I'm pretty knowledgeable on the subject. Um, I also own a wellness center in the Atlanta area called Green Herbs Wellness Center and a line of products called Green Herbs Juice. And I'm also a mom and a wife. Awesome. Awesome. You do a lot. And I am here for it. Now, I briefly <laughs> just read off some ways that we'd be able to um, tell when our gut, when our gut oh, is unhealthy or unbalanced. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit? more about the importance of why we should have a healthy gut and maybe dive a little bit deeper on um, why I should care about it and really take care of it in the first place. Yes. Um, so gut health is extremely important. And the reason being is that your gut is almost like the second brain. Um, and then lately, they've linked a lot of autoimmune issues to your gut. So when your gut is not healthy, you could actually develop a serious disease. They've linked multiple sclerosis to it. They've linked rheumatoid arthritis and they've linked um, lupus to gut disorders. So not saying that everyone's disease is caused by that, but there are many people and the first signs are usually um, problems with your gut. So when you're having, if you're having constipation, mm -hmm. bloating, um, if you're just having an upset stomach all of the time, of course, your stomach might be upset sometimes, but if your stomach yeah. is upset all the time, those are things that you need to look into. You need to maybe go to your doctor or look at the foods that you're eating if you want to try to do it yourself. Wow. Wow. We have Satin Brownie that has a comment that said, I learned this the hard way. And this just made me think of a situation when I had a few years ago that I would get <laughs> nauseous to the point where they didn't know what was going on. They thought... It was something monthly, you know, menstrual. Okay. They thought it was like I was pregnant. I was like, there's none of that. But I was <laughs> to my stomach. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if it's a good or bad thing. I know how bad it could be. But right. wow, I, it's definitely something now that I have to consider. Um, she also says, I experienced not being able to have uh, flatulence or poop for about a week. And I was in hell. Oh, wow. Yeah, I could see that. I could I could definitely see that. So some things that um, you could do to try to um, help yourself are mm -hmm. um, probiotics. Now, probiotics come in multiple forms. And um, I think there's like 5 billion, 100 billion um, are are the types that there are. But um, yeah. probiotics could help, too. Um, also fermented foods. So fermented oh. foods like kombucha. Oh, I love kombucha. Yeah, kombucha, <laughs> but you want to make sure that the kombucha doesn't have um, sugar in it. So you'll have to look on the back of your bottles and make sure that these things don't have sugar on it. There's actually kombucha that doesn't have like added ingredients in it. And it's really good. And sauerkraut. 
and things like that mm-hmm. that are fermented. Um, kimchi, if you like Japanese food, oh, kimchi, I yeah. love kimchi. Uh-huh. So kimchi is good. Those type of things can help. And also smoothies and juicing and different things like that could help as well. Awesome. Can you talk about, um, I know Dr. Sabi, I think he said that our food should be our medicine. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about how we prepare our food um, and how intentional, how important it has to be, um, and also link it to can we, not only for adults, but can kids also take um, practice in, in proper uh, food food pre- preparation as well? Yes, yes. There's um, And there's also probiotics for um, kids as well. But um, yes, as far as preparing food, we do have to be intentional because if you're not intentional, you end up with fast food and that's how the fast food gets you because you're not ready. And you're like, okay, well, let me just grab, let me just grab some of this. And it it, it happens to the best of us. You have to just try your best. Uh, Sometimes I get into the routine of getting fast food because I'm busy. And then Mm -hmm. I go back and my stomach hurts. (laughs) And then that brings me back where I have to start preparing my foods. So um, we want to make sure that we get a lot of greens you, I know a lot of people don't like salads. If you looked on my page, I know, um, I know that you have, but um, like I eat a lot of salads and I eat salads because it has a lot of nutrition in it. Um, mm-hmm. Or I add salads to, or I add the lettuce or the greens to a wrap or something like that. So mm-hmm. yes, yeah, being intentional with what we're doing. And we also don't want to overcook our food as well. So when you boil your food down, you don't want it to be so limp. You want to leave it, you want to make sure it still has a little color, a little mm-hmm. of the green color, it still has a little crunch. We also don't okay. want to cook foods. They've also linked um, saturated fats to disease as well. So mm-hmm. we don't want to fry foods. When you fry foods, you're actually changing the chemical makeup of it. And then you're putting it into your mouth and putting it into your body. And your body doesn't know how to digest to it and wow. obesity. Wow. We yeah. have another comment. I know okay. uh, we have another question, sorry, that says, uh, why do you think we take our gut um, for granted? How does culture contribute to this? Yeah, I, I mean, we do. I feel like as um, African-Americans or whatever you want to call us, because I know everybody has a different name, but um, we, we, our culture, especially here in the United States, we do have a culture of eating um, fattening foods, foods that are saturated in fats and fried. And, but I do believe that we're starting to get away from that because a lot of people are becoming more knowledgeable. Social media is helping um, being in touch with other people. So even like this show right here is able to um, get out to other people and let you guys know what's going on. But I mean, as a culture, I do feel like we're doing better. Um, A lot, yes, a lot of our, um, the ways that we eat did, did come from slavery. You know, I know when I was younger, my dad is from Alabama. My mom is from um, Chicago. You know, my dad fried all the food. So, you know, he used to cook and he fried all the food. And that's what I used to eat. But my mom, on the other hand, she always ate kind of healthy because she always watched her weight. So I always, you know, wasn't kind of in between. So sometimes I would eat that. But then my mom would always have like, she'd eat like, acorn squash and stuff like that and she wow you know, i've never heard of that yeah so i always kind of had i guess i always kind of knew about healthy foods as well right but right. um we want to we want to make sure our kids um know as well um and you know for my daughter my daughter is three and i try to give her as much fruit as possible and you know if she doesn't want to eat something i give her the fruit so i have lots of strawberries raspberries mm-hmm. things like that i try to make a smoothie and you know um to okay. get the kids to eat greens we could put it in smoothies or we can put it yeah. in juices. but smoothies yeah. are really good make sure you mm-hmm. put a banana in there and you put a little bit of greens yeah. and, and give them a little bit of that and they kind of and i mean honestly I love it. That's how I do it. (laughs) Yes, yes. It's almost like a serving. Yeah, and for adults too. That's how we get it as well. Yeah, yeah. 
I have one last question, or kind of two in one. Um, I know that you have your um, Green Herbs Wellness Center that provides colon cleansing and detox services. Can you briefly tell us about the importance of detoxing our body, and then how can people get connected with you? Okay. Um, well, detoxing is really important, especially when you want to start something new. I know a lot of people choose the beginning of the year to detox. But detoxing, you can do you can do by not eating anything um, that cleans your body out, too. It gives your body a rest. So drinking water, just drinking water, drinking a whole lot of water or even partial uh, fast from, you know, let's say you do 6 a.m. or to 6 p.m., which is uh, mm -hmm. called intermittent fasting. Even that mm -hmm. helps as well. And you can also call that a detox because it's still giving your body a break. Um, right. also a lot of people use teas, um, colon cleansing teas to, um, flush out their system and then they'll add, um, probiotics or they'll add, mm -hmm. um, their healthy foods to their, to their stomach to kind of like, I guess, take out the bad and insert the good. The good. Okay. Yeah. So, um, detoxing can be done in multiple ways. Some people can sit, you can sit in a sauna and flush it out. Nice. Sweating helps. So exercise can help, can okay. be detox. There's lots of different okay. ways and not, you know, one different way. Um, at my okay. wellness center, we do offer colon cleansing, which um, involves sticking a tube up the rectum. And then we... <laughs> Real quick, real quick. I want people to know how they can get um, connected to you because we are out okay. of time. So okay. let us know your socials. Yes. Um, you can follow me at I'm So Sophisticated. I am S-O-O -O, Sophisticated. Or follow me on Green Herbs and Juice for more nutritional information and products. Awesome, Megan. Thank you so much for being on the show. I know yeah, we're definitely going to do part two. I know, man. Part two. And <laughs> thank you so much. With thank you for inviting me. Talk to you. You're so welcome. I hope you have a great rest of your day. You All too. right, everyone. That is it for Weekends with Jesse. I hope you guys learned something. You were inspired. You were motivated. Remember, if you want to know more info, click that notification bell so you could go live. So you would be notified when we go live and upload a new video. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. And I hope you have a great rest of your weekend, everyone. Bye. Pastor Dr. Faith Walters and my support person here, Sister Marilyn. Uh, happened who has been helping me to put these uh, packages together for the community and she helped me on a monthly basis. Apostle Dr. Faith Walters received the call from the Lord to begin a ministry that would empower individuals for success in the Kingdom of God. Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries is located in Mount Vernon, New York and online at wamo.org. For over two decades, this ministry has been instrumental in helping the community overcome its challenges. And this year, the movement continued. And I'm so grateful to God that she's here right now. So we are putting a package together. We're taking things out of packages, putting them together in baskets. So as to set up um, what we're going to do to put together the things for the community. Really appreciate Dr. Faith Walters to have me as um, her assistant in getting her bag, community bags together for, you know, um, our community. And when she goes out to give it out, they always look forward to see her coming out. It's a monthly thing she does, and she really likes it. I love and it. I, and I, I love coming to help her. Yes. You know, yes. I always, even in my busy schedule, yes. Yes. I come out and I support her. On January 11th, the first outreach drive was executed and was a massive success. We are here one more time in the new year. Uh, I must say before I go on, Happy New Year to everyone once again. So I'm just excited about what God is doing for this new year, I, I'm excited about what he done already and what he's about to do for for you and you and for, for basically all of us. And 
we just thank God we're here uh, one more time. And we did the final piece to our community outreach drive. Um, we completed the package and we, we will be giving out these packages on tomorrow, Tuesday, January 11th, 2022 at 34-56 East 3rd Street in Mount Vernon, New York. The times are from 2 p.m. till 3.30 until supplies, supplies last. So I am praying that uh, people will come as quickly as possible. You know, because it's going to be kind of cold, you know, but as, as God continues to lead, we continue to bless the community, especially in this time where so many families are in need of support in some way, shape or form. So if God put on your heart to bless families or bless a, a, a neighbor, you know, whatever it is, just allow the Lord to lead you. So we are just thankful that we can do this on a monthly basis. And we pray that, you know, that you allow the Lord to move on your heart uh, to be a monthly uh, a person to to send donations uh, to the ministry to help in this process, in, in this cause. And, you know, because helping our community is such a powerful thing. And, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you do it once a month, twice a month, it's fine as long as you're doing something. You know, so that's a powerful thing. So we're just grateful to the Lord today that uh, we were able to do this. So you could go to our website at wamoe.org. And I would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're looking for as many subscribers as possible. And when you go to YouTube, put in Wamu Ministries at gmail.com. And you will you will see the um, you see me in the red sir, uh, red outfit, and you just press that subscribe button, and we thank you in advance. Here is a list of upcoming outreach drives by this ministry: Tuesday, February eighth; Tuesday, March eighth; Tuesday, April twelfth. This is a monthly initiative funded by Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries. Here is how you can help. Visit www.wamo.org forward slash give, where you can give a one-time donation or a monthly donation. Let's go. Uh, this is Apostle Faith. I'm on uh, Prospect Avenue in Mount Vernon. I just finished up 34 East, 54, uh, 53, giving out, uh, 53, giving out packages, so I'm over here. And I miss, what's your name? Miss Doris Peyton Jackson. Okay, and uh, she was really excited about get one of the packages. She has the children package, but she also has the other package too. For the adults. For, for the adults. <laughs> yes. yes, so we got hello, the... Hello. Okay. You got, got it? it? Yes, so she has the adult package, package. as well. You know, so she's very excited. Which okay. is really helpful and yes. needy around these times. Yes. I'm glad she was here. I bypassed, I came back, and this smile has been on my face. God bless this woman and anything she has done. Praise God. Thank you so much. Amen. Okay, and you just enjoy your day and have a happy new year. Likewise. Okay, bye-bye. Your donations will help to ensure that this initiative expands to reach even more people in need. Apostle Faith Live, with children, reading Bible stories. To be on the show, go to wamo.org forward slash media to apply. Okay, good morning, children. How's everybody doing today? How are we doing today? Good. All right. Are we here for another segment? Happy New Year. It's a beautiful day. This is our first uh, uh, um, Saturday in the new year, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing and God is so good. It's a wonderful thing we're looking for. Yes, we're looking for great things to happen on this year. And I'm so glad to be here to celebrate with you, celebrate Jesus with you. We're here with uh, um, uh, Blue. Little Blue, say hi. Hi. Hi to the little children. Hello. Hi. And uh, we're here with Sister London. She will be my co-host today. And 
so glad to have her and have the little children to share in another segment of Apostle Faith Live, reading Bible stories for children, teaching children about the goodness of the Lord, and to encourage children to be all that they can be. All right. All right. So today we're going to be reading, okay, we're going to be reading the story about the creation. Wow. When you hear, I'm going to ask you some questions. When you hear the word creation, what comes to your mind? So before we go into that, all right, we're going to pray. All right, so let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you. We lift you up. We glorify you, Lord, and we praise your name. Thank you for your awesomeness, your greatness, your kindness, your love. Thank you that we're gathered here to celebrate you and to for the children to learn how much you love them and how much you want them. You desire for them to be successful. We pray that you will touch every child here today. London, Sister London, and Papa Elect Blue, and all the children that are listening, all the children that are listening around the world and the children who could have made it here and there, others that are coming very soon. We thank you, Lord, for all the children. Bless the children, protect the children, let them grow up to be all that you desire them to be. Fulfill the plan and purpose for their lives. God, you love children. Lord Jesus, you said they are an heritage of the Lord. And we thank you for children, God. Thank you what you will make them to be. Thank you for these little children here today that are part of this great uh, uh, read aloud to learn about your love and learn about your son Jesus who died for our sins. And we pray you bless this segment, bless this service. And we thank you for the parents uh, that support and and take care of these children. We pray that you would bless the parents as well, that they will also prosper and be successful. And we thank you for all things. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands. Boo. Clap your hands. Clap. Clap your hands. Yes. 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 Okay, before we go into, again, before we go into our segment, we're going to sing a song. But in this one, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong, yes, Jesus loves me, yes. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. So the song says, Jesus loves me because the Bible tells me so, right? So today, we're going to talk about the creation, how everything began, how this whole world began, okay? So we're going to look at this word, creation, okay? Okay, look at the word creation and tell me what comes to your mind when you heard the word creation. What are you thinking about? Bible tells me so. Bible, okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, what else? What else do you think when you think about the word creation? What do you think? Power, okay, very good. What else? Power. What about life? Life. Life. What else? Yes? Trust. 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 Okay. All right. Trusting. Okay. Very good. 
All right. What what you what you think? What do you say? Trust. You said okay. Your sister said trust. What words do you have? Power. That she said power. What else? What else? Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Okay, the love of Jesus. So Jesus loves me. Very good. That's all right. That's creation. Jesus loves us. So the Lord allowed us, allowed creation to come forth. So he brought the world together. Okay? So when we talk about creation, it's talking about how the world came together, how the world came into being, how the world was formed. So we could say creation is world. Okay? We could say, um, I'm using a different word, formation. You can say living things, remember? Living things, remember? Living things, what else? What do you see on the outside? The sun. The sun, ah, there we go. Mm -hmm. That's part of creation. What else is outside? Snow. Uh-huh, yes, that's part of creation. It's not, okay. It's, it's okay. Not what else is outside? Cars. Okay, we okay, we get cars, okay. Cars. And you got the sky. What else do you have? The ground. Uh-huh. Okay. You got the ground. Very good. So you're getting the idea of really what we are talking about. So we talk about the ground, sun. The sky, snow, the world. We talk about life. Okay, we talk about cars being made, but at that time, God made the, made the earth. Cars were not available yet. Okay, and we talk about Jesus, because Jesus was part of creation. Very good. That blue, blue said that. And uh, living things. So, we're going to learn a lot today about how it all began. So, from the beginning, what took place. All right? So, I'm going to read the book, The Beginner's Bible, and it's written by Zondervan Publishing. So, listen carefully as I read. Okay? Listen carefully. Blue, can I get your attention? Can I have that, please? Can I have that, please? Thank you so much. We go through this all the time. Okay, you can leave that where that's at. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. Let's look at the story. The beginning. And this is taken from the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. It says, in the beginning, the whole world was empty. So the whole world. There was nothing. When something is empty, what does it say? There is nothing there. So, blue, there's nothing in the world. It's an empty space. Just like the space right here, it's an empty space. So, the world was empty. Darkness was everywhere. It was very dark and gloomy. You couldn't see anything. Oh my goodness. How was dark? Yes, it was dark. You couldn't see anything. If you walked, you will fall down. Because it was so dark. But God had a plan. Is it darkness? It was darkness, yes. What do you think the plan was? What do you think the plan that God had? To create the world. Yes! Excellent! Say loud! To, to create the world. That's right. Very to good. Very good. So, guess what God did? Blue, come on. Blue, come over. Blue, come over, please. Thank you. So, guess what God did? God separated the light from the darkness. Wow. Then he says what? Let there be light. Ah, and what happened? Light. light came. Yes, 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 yes. Light. Oh, my God. As soon as he said that, all of a sudden, boom. Oh my goodness, it's getting real bright. Right? He called the light day. And he called
call the darkness night. Okay? What did he call the darkness? Night. This was the end of the very first day. Wow. Wow. Very end of the very first day. So the first day he made light. He separated from the darkness. Because remember, first it was dark, then he made light. Okay? All right. Then God said, I will divide the waters. So there was water all over the land. There was water everywhere. So he separated the water in the separated the waters in the clouds. Above from the waters in the ocean below. He called the space between them the sky. What do you call the space between the water and the ocean? Yes, yes, yes. This was the end of the second day. Look. Next, God rolled back the waters. Look. And some dry ground appeared. Oh my goodness. Wow. wow. It's the sun. Yes. He made plants of many shapes but and colors. Yes. Look, it's, it's you. Uh -huh. I have. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, he made plants of many shapes and colors. He made mountains, he made hills, and valleys. This is the end of the third day. So on the third day, what did he make? He made plants. What else did he make? Uh-huh. He made the mountains, the hills, and the valleys. Very good. Then God put a shining sun in the sky for the daytime. And he put a glowing moon for what? The night. The very good. Excellent. And he put in what? What else is up in the sky? You see what up in the sky at nighttime? Food. Yes. Very good. So he put the moon and the twinkling stars in the sky for nighttime. This is the end of the fourth day. Wow. Isn't God doing a wonderful, wasn't he doing a wonderful job? There's a beautiful job he's doing. He's just taking his time and putting everything in place on every different day. Right? Oh, wow. Isn't God unique? Oh, my goodness. Yes. He's working so hard. Yes, he is. Working very hard. That's right, my calls. Very good. He's working hard. Wow. That's a lot of work, don't you think? Yes, yes it is to put all those things in place. If I was God, yeah. I would be very tired. Of course. But God would never do it. Oh, all right then. Nothing wrong with that. That's all right. But we're going to see if God will rest after all this work. Mm -hmm. Okay, you think he's going to rest? You think he's going to take a rest? No. All right, we'll see. We'll see. On the fifth day, God made swishy fish and squiggly creatures to live in the ocean. Then God made birds to fly across the sky. Now look at all the squiggly creatures. Do you name any of these squiggly creatures? What do you see there? A flamingo. You see them? Okay. What else? What is the shark? Squid. Uh-huh. Squid. Yes. Huh? Huh? Doctor, there is yes. a shark in it. Yes, a shark. You see a shark there? There's one right there. What else? That's a shark. Dolphin. Yeah, dolphin. What else you see there? What is this you I see at the top? I don't know how it is. Yeah, okay, flamingo. Very good. So you saw a lot of different squiggly. Look at the little crabs in there. You see fish in there. Wow, look at all these little creatures in the water. You ever think of when you go to um, certain places, certain islands? You sit in the glass, there's a boat that they have that has glass, and you can look through the glass and see the beautiful fish and the beautiful different things on the ocean floor. So this is similar to what God did. Isn't that beautiful how he took the time to put every creature together, okay, to put this world in place, okay? So that was the fifth day. Remember, that was the fifth day. All right, so we counted how many days so far? Fifth day. So we got one, two, three, four, five. The first day he made 
separate the light from the darkness. The second day he did what? He divided the waters, the clouds above the oceans. And the third day what? He rolled back the waters from the dry ground. He made the plants, right? Shapes and colors. Mountains, hills, and valleys. And the fourth day he did what? The sun, the moon, and the stars. And the fifth day he made what? Animals. Yeah, the squiggly creatures. Okay. Now, on the sixth day, what do you think God did? God made animals to creep. Crawl, hop, and gallop. No. Wow, you know the creatures that creep and crawl? Which one's that creep? I'm this one. Okay, what's that one? You gotta say the name. I think it's like a gecko. Okay, alright. And a mouse. Uh huh. And what's crawling? What crawls? You got insects that crawl. A you got turtles. You got, yes, yeah. turtles that crawl, and yes. Gecko. And what hops? What hops? Yes, that's right. And what gallops? Yeah. What gallops? That's, that's right. It's evil. Yeah, Bonnie. And you got lion, you got elephant, you got monkeys. So you had a lot of different things on the sixth day. Then from the dust, from the dirt, guess who God made? He made the most wonderful creature of all. A person. That's what you and uh -huh. me. That's right. God named him Adam. Okay, so God, when God made Adam, you see Adam right there? Yes. Okay, so God made him on the sixth day when he made all the animals that creep, creep, crawl, hop, and gallop. Come on, have a seat. Thank you. All right, so he made Adam on the sixth day. And on the seventh day, what do you think God did? What did he do? What did he do on the seventh day? Sleep. Uh, he rested. So on the seventh day, God took a break. The end. Wow. Yeah, see? Uh, you thought God didn't rest. That's a lot of work he did for six days. Can you imagine working for six days straight and don't take a break? You will get tired. So God, as great as he is, he got tired when he worked, when he put the world in place, okay? He was so tired. He said, you know what? I'm going to take a rest. I'm going to ease, take an yeah. ease. I'm going to uh, um, just relax a little bit, you know, take the load off. I'm going to drink some water. I'm going to probably exercise. What does he think God is going to do? What do you think he's going to do when he rested? You gonna lie on the sleep a little bit, right? Yes, and then I think he's just gonna watch over. Uh huh. Then he's just gonna watch over Adam. And watch over us, yes. And Ian, he's gonna see what's happening in the world. Yes, yes. And why do you think God made Adam? What do you What are your thoughts on that? What do you think God had to make man? Because so Adam, he'll take care of the animals. Ah. man to have dominion over everything. Oh my goodness, that's beautiful, Michael. Wonderful, 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 Michael. That was beautiful. Yes, he made Adam to take care of all the beautiful things, the beautiful world he made. That was just a beautiful thing he's done. So he created, well Eve did not come in the picture yet. It took a while before Eve came into the picture. It took a it took some time for God to create that. So he had to come up with another idea. All right? So we just thank God today that he made the world and he made us. Okay? And he made us to have control over all the living creatures. Yeah. All the living creatures. Everything that he made, everything that God made, it was what? Good. Did everything God make is good? Yes. Yes. Everything is beautiful. Everything. Uh, blue, blue, don't you do that. I'm going to call you then. Put that back. Okay. So, everything God says 
is good. Everything he made was good and everything is beautiful under the sun and we thank the Lord today. Now, what I'm going to do is ask you to uh, uh, um, take some time. Uh, my co-host, my bag is there. And uh, so now, are you ready now? Ready to show your picture? Yes. No, we're going to finish up now. We're going to finish up our segment. Okay. And you're going to talk about this picture. Come on up. Come on up. Come on up. I can draw something on the side. You want to draw something on the side? Okay, and here you I go. want the blue. You want the blue one? Okay, here you go. Okay. All right. All right. You want to draw your creation, your thoughts about God. Okay. And E. Mm hmm. Well, we didn't talk about Eve yet. We just talked about Adam. We talked about Eve yet? This is Adam. No, we didn't talk about Eve. We talked about Adam. Adam came on. Adam was there on the sixth day, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm making Adam. Okay, you're making Adam. Okay. Eve is, is at 21st. Okay. Eve's not there yet. She's not in the picture yet. Okay, she didn't get there yet. Remember, it's still in the beginning. And this is only the first, the first six to seven and days. Yeah, six days he did work. The and the seventh day, day, what? What did he do on the seventh day? day? He rested. Day. Yes, yes. I just dropped the spine down. Okay. All right. One, two. That's the squiggly creatures. No, that's spine down. Okay. So what day? You, what day? So that means blue drew day four. Okay, what day did you draw? What day did you draw? That was the sun as well? The sun as well. The moon. So you did day four as well. So you both did the same day. Both of, them, both of you did day four. So put day four on your picture. So put day four on your picture. Let me have that. So you both drew day four. So put day four. So you both had the same idea about how um come on so blue come on let's talk about your picture tell the children around the world what you what did you draw i draw the sun uh -huh. so show the sun what's the sun show the sun sun is in the middle okay and who is this is god oh, okay and this is this is who eve this is eve remember eve was not there yet so Adam, you drew Adam? Yes. Where's Adam? I think you drew Adam. Adam over here. Okay, and who is this over here? The spider giant. This is the squiggly creatures, okay. No, this is not squeaky. So what are they? Those are spiders. Spider, the spider? Spider. What is that? Okay, that's your little idea. Of, I'm gonna say that's a squeaky creature. No, this is, look, they have okay. legs. Okay, all right. That's, that's my spot and dust. Okay, your spot and dust. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Blue. That's the one I wanted to finish, but. Okay. I draw the sun. Mm -hmm. And then I draw the moon. And then I draw the moon. Okay. That was day four. Yes. Okay, come on over. And the you moon. Point, point to the pictures. And the moon. All right. This is the sun, and I draw a little a deer right there. Mm -hmm. And the sun. So those are those creatures as well. So you do some pictures from day five as well. Right? Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, it's wonderful. And for the nighttime, I draw stars. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. Very good. Excellent. Hi, my name is Sister London. And today I'm going to be singing Jesus Loves Me. Yes, I know. Jesus Loves Me. Yes, I know. But the Bible tells me so. Little ones who lead me wrong, they are weak, but we is he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The 
God Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, yes I know. Father Bible tells me so. Little ones who lean me long. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. I just want to remind you that Jesus loves you. And now for today's spotlight. Yumi Radio was originally founded in 2009. Back then, it was called Advanced Media Production. After winning first place in the Jamaica Broilers Fair Play Awards, the company seized operations around 2012. In December 2018 the company was rebranded and brought back into operations with new ownership, and in February 2019, it launched its first radio station, Yumi Radio, under the call sign, WUME, DB, New York. Yumi Radio is a digital radio station, owned and operated, by UME Digital Media Inc., a digital studio and multimedia company, headquartered in Bronx, New York. Our brands are committed to inspiring, educating, and entertaining people, through transformative and empowering content. Our mission is to reach 1 million households, touch 1 million lives, and showcase 1 million brands. Get the Yumi Radio app for the full experience, available via your Apple and Google Play stores. If you want to listen on the web, you may go to app.yumiradio.com or via our website at www.umeradio.com. Our content can be watched on Kareeb Vision. You can also listen in via Amazon Music, iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Google Podcast, Podbean, TuneU, Live 365, Spotify Stitcher Player FM Listen Notes. For all business inquiries, contact us at info at yumiradio.com. This station is 100% community funded. To support us, please visit yumiradio.com forward slash get involved. Subscribe on YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere online at UME Radio. Thank you for supporting us. Yumi Radio, positive entertainment 24-7.